morning, good morning. Nice. Thanks. What's going on? Welcome to the stream. Good morning, everyone. There's a few of you here today. This morning. I'm starting to get annoyed at this thing. Let's go, Scott. What's up, man? How are you, brother? How are you? Thanks for being here. Good morning, Dave. Good morning. Um, checking news here. We have one down. All right, we got news in four minutes. This thing's getting annoying. I'm gonna close it. Um, I'm getting notifications from stupid thing right here. I'm gonna close this. This is weird. These sounds like a lightsaber just went through my freaking computer. Oh my god, I clicked on something. Oh, no. Oh. <laughs> Good morning, AM. Good morning. Let's see. Good morning, Animal. Are you back? Is that Animal? Is that the same Animal that was here before? I, I think it had a different username, right? Or, or, um, I don't, yeah, okay. Well, welcome back, man. Welcome back. I know you had a different username before, so welcome, welcome. Oh, gotcha. Cool, man. Cool. Well, that's great. I remembered your username previously. I could reiterate a small fact. Always trust the Delta. Ah, okay. Always trust the Delta. Gotcha. <laughs> Is, are you referring to yesterday's squeeze? <laughs> we had a beautiful squeeze yesterday. <laughs> Into the, I mean... Yeah, yeah, yeah. That delta it kept increasing all day until about I think we got to 10k delta, and then freaking squeeze came right after. Uh, so we have 10 o'clock. We have in two minutes. Here's an HPA composite. Uh, to be honest with you, I don't know what the hell that is. Um, but <laughs> we have composite. Is it just me that can't hear you well, or is it everyone else? You know what? I actually had someone else say that. What is going on? Let me see if I can modify this. I have this setting here where I can adjust the mic volume. Let's see. You're not the only one that said that. How do I adjust this? Is this does this sound better um animal or anyone who's listening i adjusted the volume on here but i don't know if it does anything okay great okay well yeah someone else said that yesterday so um uh, let, let me try and change it on everything else okay it's already on change okay cool um great well i'm glad i fixed it it was the volume setting on my audio um for my on obs uh let's see here Janet helped. She had tea with someone. <laughs> Probably, man. I don't doubt it. Good morning, Matthew. Like your volume is low. So I fixed the volume. Hopefully that resolves it. If it doesn't, let me know. Um, I hope that fixed a little, a little bit. Good morning, Zilvinas. Welcome back, man. You're here every day. You're a consistent guy. He's always here, guys. <laughs> All right, let's see. So we got HP at composite. Oh, my God. This thing's so annoying. I'm going to close this thing. You're getting like these si I don't know if you guys heard that but I don't I, I put it so that my notifications on my computer to go through but the noise is annoying closed it. <laughs> it it's to warn me about news coming up I don't know why it sounds like that but it does and it's agitating to say the least it's about almost 6 a.m. I'm gonna wait a little bit before I start covering pre-market uh, but we had quite the run yesterday nice little squeeze on the day um we got composite numbers right now we're key area for the nq 7 uh, 710 okay same level as before i think oe productions i remember that level he's made money off that level before i called it i called that level about i don't know if it was last week yeah it was last week 
I told him about that level. Well, I, I didn't tell him, but I, I spoke about on the stream of how important that level was. Um, that level is key today. So I'm going to be watching the NQ at, to see what happens when we revisit the 710. It's an important level for the continuation to the upside or a rejection for a sell side. It's going to be a focal point of my um, market plan today, okay? So... Yeah, it's gonna get spicy. I know. For some reason, I don't like these days. I don't. I don't. <laughs> not these days. I don't like when we have a ton of earnings and stuff because the market just kind of shuffles the deck, and everything kind of gets flipped on its head sometimes, and it's kind of weird. Right, right when I have a, right when I feel like I have a handle on the market, <laughs> the the market comes in with a bunch of earnings, all these other things, and just kind of starts stirring the pot. And it's like, yeah, bro, you thought you had it, but you don't now. Here's the trend. <laughs> Here's the trend, man. Figure it out. So, yeah, we got a lot of earnings this week. I think Microsoft, Google, and then Thursday, I think we have Amazon as well. Um, a couple others, but... Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, in an hour, we're going to have jolts. Wow, that's going to be big. Okay, so we got jolts and consumer confidence. That's big. At 7 a.m. Pacific. My fiance yesterday was watching the stream. She's like, hey, you don't have your clock. I was like, you're right, babe. I don't. I'm sorry. I just realized I never opened it. <laughs> there you go. There's the clock. So at 7 a.m., my fiance, she's a um, quality control for the stream. <laughs> she's like, uh, I realized the clock wasn't there. So there it is. Um, she watches the streams every day, by the way, even after hours. She like watches it from start to finish, all three hours. It's impressive. Oil coming down, good long term level, seventy five, sixty nine, just small. Seems like bouncing before it heads up. Um, I think it still continues up, but I think they want to squeeze oil. Okay, if they want to continue this move to the upside in 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 the ES. I think they have an incentive to squeeze oil, is, is my opinion. And um, um, it could be a double-edged sword because if they squeeze oil too much, you know, you may get some issues with, depending on how high they squeeze oil. I think there's a cap on how high they want to bring oil to. I think it's about 80 bucks or so, 80-ish. 80, 80 but there's an incentive to squeeze oil because of the energy sector um, needing to go up. Yeah, 75, I agree. I think 75 is going to bounce for a little while. That level was, it could be 69. I, I haven't really looked at it too closely to know for sure the exact uh, sense, but I agree with the 75 area being a good level to kind of take bounces off of. I think they'll continue to bounce it until they're done squeezing oil stocks or energy sector. Because if you look at any oil sector or any stock like Zom or Ex Exxon or um, Chevron, um, uh, Fuck, I'm blanking out. Sorry, sometimes it's too early for this shit, but I, I look at this stuff after hours. If you look at any oil stock, it looks like it's setting up for a short squeeze. Um, good morning, Cracks. Good morning, man. If you look at Zom, let me see. I'll put them up right now for you guys' charts. Let's see. Uh, let's open a bigger time frame. They look like they're setting up for oil. Look at this. This is like the the, the literally the, the the technical analysis definition of a short squeeze, failed breakdown short squeeze. Right here, this little bottom here. This is Exxon, CBX, same thing, right? Same short squeeze potential. Good morning, Matthew. Welcome back, my friend. Uh, let's see what we got. What else we got? Uh. I am blanking out. Oxy, O I H. Look at all of these oil stocks. Um, I mean, even XLE for that matter. It looks like the definition of a short squeeze bottom. <laughs> so <laughs> I think they have an incentive to hold oil up so they can continue to squeeze this sector. The measured move, I have no idea. I have more or less an eyeball on this one because I have my fiance. I told her to get long oil around this area here, somewhere around on 98 or something. She has a brokerage with shares, and I told her to get long here, somewhere around here. And I told her 104 and then 108, give or take, to take it off the table. 104, 108. 
<clears throat> so I think they have a potential as long as they hold over a hundred, give or take. They can hold um, oil and um, this individual and at least this ticker. Um, I've been looking at it for a little bit. Sorry. So now that we're at six o'clock, let's go look at the pre-market analysis here, fellas. See what we got. Two hour. I mean, look at obviously trends up. Oh my God! Look at this. Look at this pattern, you guys. It's beautiful. Beautiful. This is the, this is such a beautiful pattern. And it really is. Like it's a wet. I don't. I don't remember the name of this one, but. There's the cheese, very nice cheese. This is fancy cheese, okay? This is like that fancy cheese that tastes like soap. My fiance loves it, it's called brie cheese. Disgusting, but she loves it. She looks like fancy cheese to me. I'm not a fan. It doesn't have little circles though. Good morning, ghost. There's your cheese wedge, led to a breakout. Does it lead to a failed breakout and then I'm just kidding, I'm, 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 not, I'm not gonna. I don't know, I don't know. <laughs> Point is that we broke out of this little uh, wedge we have and I think the, the the most beautiful thing that could happen is if we can come down, revisit the 80, the 25 one more time, learn some shorts thinking they're going to break this back down, and then squeeze. We'll see though. That's kind of primarily what I'm interested in, okay? So kind of more or less what I'll be looking for. And I don't think it happens today, given that we have some catalysts around the corner. Um, what I'll anticipate is looking for a retest of the breakout somewhere around the 27, 28, 28 to through 25. This general zone, I'll be interested in trying some longs here depending on order flow. Uh, I'm gonna open up the volume profile in a bit, but more or less just from a, a uh, level standpoint, I'm interested in this area for the most part to see if they can revisit this area and trap some uh, some aggressive shorts trying to squeeze price, uh, as assuming they're gonna squeeze price lower and drop it below. Uh, and then from there we see and then the other area is um, uh, the 50s, 54 area up here. This is kind of what coincides with the, with the NQ at 710. I want to short. I want to see what happens at the 710 on the NQ. I'm more interested today, as far as pre-market goes, as to what happens with the NQ at the 710. That is more or less my main point of interest for trading today. Um, everything else, I'll try it in between, of course, as I usually do, but. I'm more interested in what happens with the NQ. I feel like the NQ has a story to tell, and it's the real story that we're gonna, that's going to move the market in 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 whichever direction they want to take it. Especially since we're at all time highs. So let's look at the volume profile for now. Um, there we go, 25, right at the low volume node, just a little bit above 28. Low volume node is about right here. This is kind of the area I want to see them test. So it's 28 through uh, 29 through 25, something like that. Okay, this is the area that I want to see revisit and see what they do. Um, the other area, again, I mentioned up here was the value area high from the overnight session. It's going to be more or less up here from 57 to about 55. That value area high is going to be an interesting area to see if they can break it. I don't think they will. If they come up here and break, I don't think they'll break because they have earnings today. I think they'll attempt to take it up here one more time. And then I don't think they'll have follow through to break above because they're waiting for earnings and the Fed meeting to see if they make new highs. But hey, they can do whatever they want. I'm just assuming that's my potential idea is that if they take it to this VAL, I'll look for a short entry depending on the flow. Assuming they can't break it higher, just waiting for that catalyst to get out of the way, whether earnings for tech today or for the Fed meeting on Wednesday. So it'll be more or less like a double top, so to speak, that they'll try to form, in my opinion. Um, if this level coincides with the 710 on the NQ, then I'll definitely be more interested in shorting uh, with both hands. And then we're trading at a, right before a low volume node right now. I'm not really interested in this too much. Um, I'll kind of gauge it as we're trading right now into the open. We have about 30 minutes still, or 21 minutes, but um, more or less interested in the 50s and then the 20s or trades, these two areas. See the NQ. Here's the NQ. 7 tenths point of control, okay. So more or less, so, oof, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. 
So more or less interested at the higher end of that distribution, at the 20s through the 30s on the NQ. Um, I'm I'm open to starting at the tw at the tens, but depending on the flow, if they slow price down a lot at the tens, then I'll take the short seven ten or whatever trade they give me. I don't know why I assumed short. <laughs> I have a squeeze level here. Yes, I had these levels yesterday. I said over six hundred we can squeeze, and then we squeezed. <laughs> we definitely squeezed. Um, and then we have the seven ten area. If we can hold above seven ten, we can squeeze again. Uh, that's why I have that level. I'm so interested in this area because I understand that the 710 area has a, is a squeeze potential level. I don't know if they give it to me. Um, the most bearish scenario we could have is if the ES is trading at the 55s while the NQ is trading at 710. Um, and the reason I think that's bearish is because one or the other can give up the give up the ghost <laughs> at the high there, and then it'll, it'll pull the other one with it to pull back into the previous uh, demand area. So that's kind of what I'm anticipating today. I don't know if we break out. I'm anticipating they'll bring us down or kind of keep us in range um, until earnings. And then from there, after the bell, when they have the earnings, they rip us in either direction. And then we'll be pending the Fed meeting after that in a weird spot, which I have no clue where that will be. It's a weird week to trade, to be honest. I'm not really, it's hard for me to give because trend can change in a matter of some data coming through it at the end of this session, or even the jolts opening report coming in at 7 a.m., the, the, everything I'm assuming can flip on its head. I'm not gonna try to guess what the news means to the market, I don't do that, but the flow of orders will tell me what to trade. Um, so if you do try to guess what news it means to the market and how the mar how market's gonna digest the news, if that if the expectations are here and, and you think they should be here and the market interpreted it's here, it just just don't do that. Just don't. It'll save you a lot. <laughs> It'll save you so much headaches and so many mistakes if you stop assuming what the market is pricing in or what the data means to the market. Um, I used to try to do it, but I learned that if I just follow the flow and follow the orders that the market will reward me as a result of just following what it wants, what it, what it what it's deciding to do. A little side rant there. Nonetheless, uh, above 710, I'm looking for a long, and then if we can revisit 600s, I'll potentially see what's possible there. This is more of a make or break it zone. If we can hold here or break down, this is kind of like a 50-50 area for me, I think, for the NQ. We can ho either hold here and rip, we can hold here and give up and come back to yesterday's, um, yesterday's low. So this is a focal point area, uh, big pivot area in my opinion. Uh, so I don't know what we do today, to be honest with you, just because I don't know what the trend holds and how the perception of the market, what the participants of the market are pricing in, in terms of waiting for the news that we have in an hour. And then after that, we have earnings as well. So it's really hard for me to give a pre-market plan and which general direction to take this. The trend is up. Don't get me wrong. But at the same time, whatever is happening right in between yesterday and now can flip on its head based on the next hour. And then also after hours so i'm just more malleable today than i am normally um so we'll wait and see we'll wait and see all i can do is have zones of interest and trade them and that is what i provided for now let's see does anyone have any questions it's a pretty rough overview of what i'm looking for today i don't really have a, a huge expectation i'll have more or less information as the kind of the day progresses and I, we get the data coming through and I'll have a better understanding of what to expect. But I need to see the catalyst come through first. Let's see. Oh my God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Anyone have any questions? Let's see here. Everyone feel like my volume is appropriate today? I think uh, Anmol um, 
said this morning that my volume was low. And I think Matthew said that yesterday too. I hope it's appropriate enough for you guys. It's not too loud. All right. Sometimes the Celsius hits too hard, guys. Sounds better? Okay, good. Good. I it was just I just had the, the settings on OBS. I had it too low, unfortunately. Great to see you, Rick. Wish you all the best for you today. Hey, uh, great to see you too, stream and shout. I hope you have a wonderful day as well, and good luck. I appreciate it. Matthew, I'll look at your email um, after the after the, the uh, today's session, and I'll respond. Um, I'm referring to Matthew Justice. I'll respond after. Well, there's two. Oh my God! I just realized both of you guys, Matthew. The, there's one of you guys that yeah, no worries. Okay, cool. Yeah, I'll look at it after, and then I'll respond. Uh, are you also in that one day Apex Combine? Uh, no, I am not. Um, I mean, they don't have them anymore, unfortunately. I actually was just opening that, see if it ended. So no, it's they no longer have the one day. It's over. Uh, now it's just seventy one percent off again. So they don't have the one day um, eval anymore. So you have to do this full seven days in order to be uh, funded. So they have the seventy one percent off, whatever uh, sale with the resets, the regular resets. So if you missed the 80% and the um, one day evals, it's, I think that ended yesterday or I don't remember when, Friday, something like that. I don't, know. I don't do the whole one day eval thing. Uh, they haven't done 9% since a long time. Yeah, I don't think they will. Maybe they will. I don't know when. I don't want to say I don't think they will, but um, but yeah, I think next week they bring it back. So what? Um, so. Oh, I'm on Apex. Yeah, I'm on Apex. I'm just not on the um Sorry, I'm blanking out. Shit, man. I need to drink some more of this shit. I um didn't sleep too well yesterday. I'm having trouble sleeping lately, man, but it's okay. It's okay. I think next week they bring it back. Sometimes I wake up and fucking like wake up thinking fucking about trading. It's nuts. Um it's not good. <laughs> it's not good. So what other platform are you if, uh, Yeah, on Apex. I hope that answers your question. I don't know if you have any others. Uh, Apex, Apex. I trade Apex because I like the micros, okay? I uh, I like to hold micros and I like to buy more than the amount that um, Top Step allows. I like Top Step. They're great. I've used them before. Um, and the thing is that I just like to have more than 10 micros on my trade so it, unfortunately top step doesn't accommodate to the needs that I have, I need to trade in, within my strategy but I uh, apex apex epic here I put the uh I think they gave me a pro my own personalized promo code recently I asked for one you take forever to respond though apex 71 percent off unfortunately they just take forever to respond I put in a promo code there um, I think it's, I'm going to change it here on my settings. They gave me one over the weekend, but the, the thing is that they don't, they, they told me they changed it, but then I don't see it on my, on my, on my, uh, on my portal. It still shows the previous code that they gave me the weird one with the bunch of letters, but I'll put it here. Let's see if the coupon code was, the code should be trade W Rick trade with Rick. That should be the promo code. Um, that they gave, well, that I requested. I tried to do TWR, but they said it was taken. That was lame. They're breaking down the NQ right now. Does anyone here have a footprint chart for the NQ? I've tried opening up a, a, a footprint in, a chart, a footprint chart for the NQ before, and it was nuts. I didn't like it. But I'm curious if anyone else has one. Yes, me using MZ Pack. Okay, cool. What's MZ Pack? I do, but don't use it. I think that off the open, they will take the ES lower, fill the inefficiency at 42, 32, and then grind higher. Yes, I do. Oh, okay. So some of you guys have the. How does it look in respect in regards to this? You know, like like it just sold off. Like what what what, what kind of what happened on that last candle print? That was a huge dip, dump, and then they just brought it back. <laughs> they just bounced it. Now. 
Oh my god, I don't have enough real estate. Me neither, man. Me neither. I have other stuff that I have here, you know. Uh, they offer both volume, TPO, and footprint. Oh, cool, man. Cool. Sounds like a great uh, platform. Um, yeah, MZ said it's called MZ Pack. Okay, okay. Sounds like medicine. <laughs> MZ Pack, it sounds like a medicine. <laughs> um, that's cool, man. I'm glad they have overflow tools. I don't have enough screen real estate. Yeah, me neither, man. Absolutely. <laughs> I'm sorry. It just it just sounds like it to me. Like I read it, I thought it was like I, the initial thought was medicine. I know what you're talking about though. That it's a uh, software. Um. Cool. Cool. Well, thanks everyone for being here. God bless you guys. Good morning to everyone. Um. Today is going to be an interesting day in terms of what will happen um with the range. Yesterday it was kind of boring all morning, and then after I left, an hour after, they, they started to gradually inch it higher. And it was a nice call on uh, Dave. Dave, by the way, he gave in, you know, check a look at the cumulative delta, and that thing kind of told the story. So what I'm seeing, you're using footprint. Yeah, yeah, that's correct. I'm using uh, footprint and the DOMs on Jigsaw. Yeah. yeah. And I have specific settings that I have on the NQ. If you look at the NQ, it's different DOM, right? You have different information in here. Uh, and I also have a tick compression on the NQ right here. This is compressed um, as well. They are doing the same thing. The NQ just feeling the inefficiency, slowly grinding, lower volume spike, probably market makers turning the edge on Alcos. Yeah, you know, um, I think there's a potential to revisit, like you said earlier, about the 42, 32. I think 38, the level in between both of those levels you just gave, 42 and 32, I think 38, there's... Um, there's some fills there that I need to come back and revisit. When I was watching order moves uh, run yesterday, the 38s was an area that I uh, had a huge volume node that I think can revisit at some point um, today, the 38s. It was an area of interest yesterday that I was watching. I, I saw it run past and I'm like, it's gonna come back and revisit, it never did. I think today we may revisit that 38 area. We're not that far out, we're at 43, so about seven, six points from there. Would you mind sharing your workspace or is that no 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 not at all man I have a video on it actually here let me post it I just made a video today uh yet yeah, today sorry I made it this weekend um on everything that I have all my settings so of course it's not too private man I'm here to share it. I'm here to share it all ain't I ain't nothing from you guys let me just show you put the link in the video if you want it but I, I, in there I show my like what I use my settings um for everything on my on my workspace. So let me share the video link here. If you want to watch it later, I recommend it. It's a little long, but I have chapters, and so you can just skip around and see what. There's some volume in this candle that's been hanging for the last few minutes. Uh, this last uh, on the ES, hmm. I th I, get, I think they run it. I think they want to hold 45 and then run it. 45 is a folk is a is a key level. From yesterday's um, when we when we ran all the way to 56 yesterday, do you clear your volume profile each day? Yeah, yeah. This yeah, each session actually, so each session. Let's cover that before they open the bell. But yeah, each session I clear the the volume profile. Okay, so right now in the into going into cash session, this volume profile is going to close. Okay, it's going to start a new one. But th let's look at the volume profile for the overnight. It looks like 49 has most of it. Most of the volume 49.50. Uh, that three point spread area and most and some more at around the 55 through pretty much the whole high end fuck just ticks ah yeah that's right that's right okay that makes sense yeah okay that makes sense where's the nq's volume the nq volume is at the 710 so here we go so this is the key area for the nq here all right if you want to scalp this is your area if you want to find a position to trade into this is your area right here the 720s through the 710s that zone is going to be a marvelous area to take a trade in, okay? So um, because of the overnight profile, I think we're going to kind of run into that zone. We might run back into it, but we'll see, guys. We'll see. Um, I want to... Here it is. Yeah. I think we run back to the 720, 710s on the NQ for sure. Remember I used Renko, uh-huh, oh, I read that already, shit. 
All right, so right here, so yesterday, as I was saying, that the ES boom had a nice banger run to 56 um, in the in the session, and then it pulled back all the way to 45. So I know 45 is important for the for the bull bear. Okay, this is like a middle spot right here. The 45 area, 45, 46 is like the midpoint for um, move up or down, in my opinion, based on yesterday's action on the pullback. We pulled back from 56 straight to 40, uh, 56 to 46. And then from there, we held, we paused there for a while. I saw the market uh, pause here for a minute and then bounce at 46, 45 area. So this area is important. Just keep that in mind. Okay. Let me write that down on my chart. Actually, I don't have it drawn out. Uh, I hope to answer your question, um, stream and shout. Um, if you if you want me to show my settings, I can do it now. I don't have a problem opening it up right now too quickly to be like five minutes before we open. I can kind of show the settings right now if you want to look at them. Um, each individual one, that's fine. Let me know. I'll do it too. I don't care. Uh, Forty five. <clears throat> 45 and what was the other level I mean I'll just say I think it's 52 but I'm gonna just put 56 55 ish you think yes I did thank you Rick to you a lot yes every day but I have all my live streams posted on my ch on my um on my YouTube channel so you can you can go back to each any day I've streamed the past month or two I think two months maybe three uh the past two months you can see all of my live streams and then uh they're all free of course and uh on my channel and then also I have chapters in them too in case that I covered something important in those live streams sometimes I cover what I feel is important like how do I, how I use the Dom in real time to to scalp the market um, there is one that I that I made a video with chapters within my live stream that shows how I observed the Dom fluctuating in real time and I gave you guys my entry on the short and then where I was going to cover that short and why as price was moving uh, I was trying to teach Renner, I don't know if he's here today, how I use the DOM, someone that's on the stream uh, in the chat. And um, I also have live streams from when I've caught those trapped shorts or trapped longs at specific levels as well that I try to put chapters in. So VWAP's here. Here, Renner, Renner yeah. So Renner, was he's on the chat right now. I, I was teaching or trying to show him how I use the, uh, the DOM um, to read the DOM. So yeah, you can see my live streams. They're all there. And they have chapters for the most part. The ones that have the most that I feel have the most important value in the stream, I go back and I watch them and I create chapters in them so that way you don't have to find it. Lack of participation up here with uh, VWAP. It's hard for me to say that. Um, I just it's a low volume period right now before two minutes are up. But I can see um, where is VWAP right now. Is it right here at 46? I've subscribed. Really enjoying the positive vibes. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. Yeah, it's all positive vibes here. Yeah. 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 Uh, 48? Okay. Gotcha. Mine says 49. This this orange thing is, is 49 on mine. I don't know why. So weird. I, I think one of you guys said that it probably calculates, calculates it differently. <laughs> I mean, look at the delta coming into that high. It was it's negative now. It just flipped it. Yeah. Forty-eight seventy-five. Ah, okay. So it's mine says forty-nine. <laughs> Funny, <laughs> like a tick above. Okay. Um, we got one minute before the bell. Ooh. Damn it, dude! I gotta take a shit too. This fucking sucks. So forty-nine. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> uh, so we got news at seven a.m. Okay, so um, well. Whatever uh, depends on the five versus fifteen. Used five versus fifteen. Uh, what does it say? Versus fifteen versus sixty, etc. I'm sorry. What do you mean, Matthew? Depends on time. What time frame is it? Oh, oh, five minute. Uh, the footprint is on five minute. This is a five minute um, footprint. Oh, okay, gotcha, gotcha. That makes sense. Sorry, I. I I wasn't keeping up. I'm sorry. Cool. On V12 calculation. I think it's the same no matter what time frame you use, though. VWAP should be the same no matter the time frame. 
because VWAP is a volume weighted um, uh, indicator. Yeah, he uses uh, you use Renko, so that he doesn't use time based candles. And that's the bell. He used, yeah, he uses volume based uh, candlesticks. So or Renko chart, Renko, uh, Renko sticks. Yeah, yeah, that's right, Dave. You tell him. <laughs> Where's ribs at, man? Ribs here today. Five thousand tick chart, right? Is that what that is? So I want to see what happens when the NQ gets. Well, I don't even know if it's gonna get there. Look at it. It's weird. Let's see what I have here. Uh, one, not right. Let's see, I need to check something. Sorry. Let's see, uh, fifty-one, twenty-one, fifty-two. Let's check. He just rolled up the trading desk six minutes to open. Like he's like Wall Street. Who? Oh. Who did that? How dare they? Pausing here. Rips. <laughs> oh man, he came in. He's like, how are we gonna? How? What? what whose meat are we taking today? Whose meat are we taking today? Slow and kill. Oh yeah, this is a very weird open, honestly. Look at this. This is like so. Look at all the participation in one little area. That's funny. This is gonna. This is really odd right here. I think they've trapped some buyers here, but it's only one minute, two minutes into the open. I think they've trapped some participants right there at the high. Um, I'm almost interested to try it small there, like three contracts, based on this flow here, staying below that P profile. Yeah, I'm gonna try the absorption here. It, I'm probably going to get stopped out on this trade because it's too early to tell. But if they can absorb more orders here and the NQ get below the open, I think we have a nice P profile setup. But it's too early to tell, honestly. Like In reality, I should be waiting for maybe another profile to form and then go from there. But I'm going to take it. I'm just going to put it as a random stop. It's not really anything uh, specific. This trade is more or less like a... <laughs> Toy, a coin toss. I don't really have enough data to know for sure. Uh, but I just like the profile overall. It's really weird. We haven't had a profile like this at the open in a while. This has not happened at the open in very in some time. The NQ's flow, look at the DOM, look at the uh the DOM move up. It's really weak. Every single it spaces up, there's no strength in this move. It's kind of gradually inching higher. And this is weird behavior, given that we're at the uh, open, there should be more conviction on the move. Normally, you get aggressive moves up. Where are we at in respects to profile? No, I don't want to short it here. I like to short on the MQ2, but I'm not taking it here. I want to wait for 700s and over to trade on the MQ. I want to consider a short. <clears throat> Absorbing price here at the 85. Not good. No good, guys. Uh, very slow open as well. Very soft open. It's not very well traded as far as volume. It's kind of weird. So just keep in mind they can. I should. Def, uh, they should defend and you should. Oh, they should defend. Okay, yeah, some relevance. Okay. I mean, I'm gonna stop out. I, yeah, there we go. I figured it would stop me out if they didn't resolve this P profile in the way I was anticipating. But look, look at the divergence though. Check this out. Like the NQ is now going lower while the ES just took stops out. Those those orders that came through those are just stops. The, the, and the NQ's divergence lower not making a new high and then the es was trying to make a hey, some waiting for my news maybe yeah probably we have uh 30 minutes till that news and that news has a high volatility event so i'm going to be waiting for that 
I'm not really going to play this around. If I do, it'll be very small size before now and then. But I think there's the downside potential. Look at the NQ. As I was going to 85s, got absorbed on the way up. Now they're getting more active. Oh, wow. Look at some buyers are showing up here at 60s. Look at the activity on the down picked up. Kind of funky. So the, the buyers are willing to participate here at the high 60s. There they are. Welcome to the party, bulls. Welcome. So just wait. If this forms another um, profile within this little area and they are unable to break, then, then it's over. They're going to retrace this lower. But I think waiting for that 55 area to trade would be a better opportunity. Wait for three more points of upside. The NQ is struggling though. Just keep in mind that although the ES is relatively strong, look at the NQ. The NQ has tried to break to high of day and is failing to do so. And look at the pace of the DOM as well. This pace is really weak. This is not what you see in aggressive buying, okay? This is relatively weak buying to the upside. So they're scared here. They're not really showing aggression. Okay, so this is a weak one. I might short this one outright. Actually, you know what? I'll short this one here and then I'll wait to see what the NQ does. I like the divergence here between the two. Wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. Fire showing up? No, they're not. They're not going to fill me. Damn it. Oh, well. There's a divergence trade here. You just got to... Well, hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm closing that out. Look at the NQ try to come back up. What are you going to do, buddy? You finally... Sh nope, nope, still skipping lower. I think there's a potential divergence trade here between the two. But you got to be cautious because every time we hit the 60s, the buyers are willing to show up here. They're showing up right here and holding it. So if you want to be conservative, if you want to really get that really high quality short, just wait for them to sh to get absorbed here and unable to uh, push price up at the 60, high 60s. And they'll have a high quality short there. Yeah, I'll get a second chance, I'm sure. I'll wait. Um, so just watch the, the high 60s. This area here. There, the the bulls. You can either do two things. You can short the 80s here, take some off the table at the 60s, and then wait for them to finally break it down or see what happens. But that at that point you'll realize some profit and your stop should be tight. So that way your risk reward is pretty high, um, and you secured some money along the way. So shorting the 80s here. I'll show you what it looks like. I'll do it. I'll do it myself. So I'm gonna just do five just as an example. Okay, this is what I would do if I was looking to trade this area. Do that and then take majority of profit here oh, oh my god 15 oh boy so i'm just taking it small to kind of give you guys an understanding of what i mean Let's do three here and then um this is where they'll revisit right this is where they're reloading all the buyers here and then this is where the weakness is showing up every time we tape tape up here so assuming the weakness is present here still they're going to reload have to come back and reload at the uh where the buyers are here at the 60s and from there, I'll take majority profit and then put my stop real tight and that'll, that'll secure the trade and the trade will be free, risk free at that point if they feed me, if they can feed me the 60s. Does that make sense? They took some stops here on the move down on the MQ. I think, I definitely think there's a downside rotation possible. The overall flow looks relatively weak on the upside, but we'll see. So I always, whenever I'm trading the NQ in specific, or any, any ticker for that matter, I'm always looking for the weakness and then identifying where the strength is. And then I try to try to maneuver myself and getting in, in where the weakness lies if I'm shorting or vice versa if you want to get long. And then try to get out where you know there's, the participation is, is increased on the opposing party. Get out and get out of their way and take some money where they're at and then let the trade pan out and let them figure it out what they want to do, right? As far as battling it out. Just watch the flow. Nothing about this says it's bullish for the NQ, right? Nothing about the flow is bullish. It, that can change within seconds, right? It doesn't matter if it's happening, that it's not happening now. The dynamic can shift, but all I'm betting on is that the bulls are gonna give up here and that they're gonna have to reload down here and that's where I'll take profit on. They're still trying, they're being pesky now inside the volume profile, inside distribution. 
I'm just trying to make this trade free for some so for the most part, right? They aren't allowing me. They keep buying it, bastards. I like, stop trying to teach people things, Rick. Okay. Like a head fake for a move higher. It's kind of a 50-50 shot here, man. They're like holding both sides here. Like they don't know which side to pick. Got yeah, news in 20 minutes, so we'll see. It's like in a split area where they can either rip it or bring it lower. From what I'm seeing on the NQ at least. The ES, I'm not sure. Yeah, the ES too. It's like halfway between 55 and 46. The two areas of interest. <laughs> So they're like split down the middle and they don't know which way to take it. So in other words, this area is dookie. <clears throat> yeah, this area from the overnight session was a low volume area. So they're building value here, which is bullish, right? Because the trend's up. So that I agree with that, uh, Dave. <laughs> Fuel for the fire. Look at all that participation getting stuck here. Okay. So again, I, the, the concept isn't really technical. It's more order flow based. The, the reason for my take profit is because I this is where all the buyers were showing up when we were drifting lower. Okay. It has nothing to do with the level. It just has to do with participation. Uh, participation here is weak on the buyers participation here is strong on the buyer so I'm just trying to I'm just trying to I'm just trying to gauge which side is um, I'm not even trying to bet on a side I'm just trying to I'm just trying to bank on the the the, the, the toss the they're tossing the ball back and forth between these two areas the bulls and the bears and I'm just trying to capture the move between the bulls and the bears while trying to secure profit and so that way I can make my trade as risk-free as possible so what I'll do here is Essentially, once they give me 68, I've covered 70, oh, well, seven, about 65% of the position, and I'll put my stop really tight. So even if I get stopped out, it's still a win. And, I, and, and I'm giving the trade enough, enough area or enough room to breathe as well in the event that it wants to run 50 points plus. Let me know if that makes sense to you guys. There's, there's, there it is. I knew they'd give it to me. They just made me work for it in terms of patience. So I'll put it at a new high. I have two left, but I just wanted to make the trade risk-free. Okay, nice, nice. Good morning, good morning, Jorge. Welcome back, man. So I'm just, so again, and I was explaining it to you guys, and I'm like, I'm going to take the trade to teach you guys what I mean. Anyway, this is the buyer. So you can see they're getting aggressive here yet again, still showing up as, as anticipated. But I sh I, many times we came into this area, and it was, there was weakness. And then their weakness was there, right? And then after that, they would bring it to high 60s, and then there was a strength, and they'd bounce it back. So they're playing ball right here. They're playing ball between here and here. And I said, okay, I'll short here into here, make the trade risk-free in terms of capturing profit, and then put my stop so tight that even if I get stopped out, I'm still green on the trade. Trade management, right? So that way I have exposure to the downside move because of the weak DOM while also mitigating my risk on the downside in the event they stop me out. Okay, does that make sense to you guys? I saw the I saw the play right. The market showed its hand, showed me the flow, and I I try to capture the flow of participants, bulls and bears, profit from their imbalances on both sides, while trying to remain hold exposure in the event that they give me a bigger move. Let me know if that makes sense. That was a a huge a uh, nice teaching moment there for you guys, as far as like um, watching participation. Profiting between the balances. I only did five. I did five and I closed three at the bottom. Five micros. I did it small because I didn't have high conviction on the trade. I just wanted it to use more or less for a teaching, uh, a teaching of a uh, principle of what I was trying to explain. So I took it small. But does it make sense? I mean, you know what? I'm not gonna. I'm just gonna pull a poll. <clears throat> Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, good. I'm glad that you, I made it easy. Great. I'm glad. It was, I was trying to explain it, and, and then, but also I was like, well, let's take the trade. That way you guys can see actually what I'm talking about in real time without having to guess if I was right or wrong. This is a scalp. Oh, yeah. This is definitely a scalp. 
This is not a, this is a hybrid, if you will. This is a hybrid between a Skype, a, a Skype, a scalp trying to turn, trying to, trying to um, finesse it into a, 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 a bigger move. Okay. Yeah, six cent. Yeah, this is my entry point. So that if any time, um, I know you're new here, but if this level, the ones in the center column are red, that means I'm short there at that level. If it's blue, then it means I'm long at that level. So I'm short at 680. Yeah, 680. And then I sold, I covered some at 68. So um, Renner, it's a scalp, but it's more of a hybrid, okay? It's a scalp that I'm trying to finesse into a potential long trade uh, for a bigger move, right? I, I'm trying to flimsy it. I'm trying to maneuver it. Um, sorry, I'm trying to change the chat on my... I don't want to answer my freaking poll. <laughs> anyway, um, I guess I'll look at this one. Okay, I'm just trying to finesse the market here. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure the DOMs are all different. So yeah, if, if this center column ever turns red, you mean you mean short? Uh, this DOM ever turns red and it's a short trade. If it turns blue and supposed to red, then it's a long trade. Okay, and then my PNL is on the my my open PNL is on this column, so you can tell if it's blue, then it means I'm short. If it's red, then it means my shorts again uh, losing money on the upside. Um, you mean short long term trade? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm trying to scalp. The position right between the two ranges and then also hold enough of a position of the overall size to to hopefully um you know hold it for a longer move ideally for like 50 or plus points okay that's why i took three off scalped it but it's more of a teaching moment i was just trying to teach what i was trying to explain to you guys i didn't want to i didn't want to be that guy who was like see i told you i told you to get short to 80. It worked. <laughs> so I figured I'd just take the trade. I like this area. I like what's going on with the ES here for a short too. This is a lot of part, uh, trap participation in a weird spot. The, the area we got to get built and where I can't, oh, sorry. Uh, and where can I see your stop loss? Oh, uh, my stop loss is right here. This is the two S. Anytime there's an S next to a number, it means that's where my stop is. That's my stop. And then if I have a take profit, it looks like this. This is where my take profit is. The one L. If you see a one L at any point, that means my one limit order to take profit. Anyway, um, as I was mentioning here, this is this is the area here, a little line in the sand. The 51 and a quarter or, or 50. This area here, if we get below, I think we can short this down to 46. But the messed up part is that we haven't used a little bit. Do we have Discord? No, I don't have a Discord. I don't, Mr. Sandman. Sorry, I don't have a Discord. I have a free chat on YouTube here where everyone can ask me any questions you please. But I don't have a Discord. I've been asked before. Is that like common practice or something? People would have Discords. That's the trade I'm looking for. Good trade, man. Good eye. That is a trap participant trade. This can potentially lead to trap buyers. We got to get below this node right here. Get below that, you trigger you trigger the 50s. You know this is a good area to see absorption. If they break it down, come back in, absorb price right here. If the absorption takes place here, you short that thing all the way down to the 46s. 46s cover some and then hold the rest and see what happens. Oh, discords are. Do you have a Lambo? <laughs> no man, I don't have a Lambo. I have a Tesla Model 3. Okay, I'm not fancy. Um. Have that and a Jeep Wrangler. It's not mine though. It's my fiance's and I's. So, discords are a hot thing. Oh, okay. Well, good to know. Good to know. Ooh, they're coming for my stop. Again, even if I get stopped out on this trade, it's still green. That's the lovely thing about the management of this trade. Okay. So no stress off my back. I feel like adding to this short though on the MQ. I'm just not going to. <clears throat> Would you consider that area is, an, is now a value area for morning session ES? This area, yeah, this is, as of right now, this can be, this can start be the start of a distribution, okay? This could be the start of, what, of a new distribution for this session. So yes, this can be like this. 
this can be the balance right here. Okay, what could potentially happen is that this could be balance, and then the value or high might be up here somewhere, maybe 55, and the balance on the lower end might be 45. Okay, and this will be the middle point of balance overall. I don't know if that makes sense. If I were to picture it from a distribution standpoint, this is what I would be picturing. So if we, as we get closer to 55, 56, you might want to short. You could potentially short up there for, and then take some profit at the 50s, give or take, at the at the mid uh, low 50s. Yeah, yeah. That's the way I see the distribution right now. I'm not trading any big size this week um, at all because I don't like the fact that we have so many catalysts um, in the way. Gonna try that on MES. Okay, cool. I'm gonna try it a little higher. I don't want to try here. I said pre-market I wanted 55. I want to see if they can give me 55. <clears throat> if they don't, then oh well, I'll miss the trade. That's fine. I have exposure to the downside on the NQ, but I, I'm very cognizant that this NQ trade can be stopped out like within the next 10 minutes because we have a catalyst. I gotta be right, I gotta be right back. I'll be right back. All right. They're just pausing here. Oh boy. That dude shit, man. All right. I'm going to set some OC orders because I, I unfortunately, I have to go to the restroom. And I got to be here before the news comes out. I don't trade the news, but I got to be here before. Let's see. Let's do... Let's do one at 50, uh, 54. No, there's not enough volume there. We'll do 56. And then the other one would just be free and clear. I think what I want you guys to realize here is that the, they, haven't, they haven't given me... This, this trade has not been in any drawdown. It's fucking nuts. It was a clean entry. I say that and they're going to stop me out. <laughs> um, anyway... I put one more take profit at uh, 56, as that is the pre-market little low, the swing low before they popped it. So I, I take profit there, and then I'll hold one more, and then we'll see what that takes us. <laughs> I'm gonna take you guys with me to the toilet. No, I'm, I'm no, I'm good. I'll, I'll be right back, guys. I gotta go to the restroom. I like the shorts here. So this is what I'm looking for. Okay, if we can break down between between here this volume node. And then we can break down, come in, come back in, absorb price right here. Absorption takes place. You can have a good quality short setup against the current high. Um, but I'm kind of scared to do that because there's news coming out in seven minutes. I'll be right back. Uh, I use four screens. Yeah, I look around a lot. So I have four screens total. Um, I have the DOM footprint screen right here that I'm, you guys have. And then I have one above that that has all my four charts on the ES. 
And then I have the NQ charts on another one with a lot of bunch of smaller charts like oil, 10 year, um, SPX, and then, yeah. Aya, aya. Oh man, we didn't get you a new one? All right, sick. There you go. Yeah. Okay. So what's going on here, guys? Was the ES going to decide what to do? I think we're probably going to wait. The thing is, like, I would love to take the ES short too. <laughs> Look at the volume. There's none. That's so funny on the ES here in the DOM. Um, I would love to take the ES short, but the problem is that I want to have little to let uh, little exposure going into the news. I don't really want to be holding a full position, meaning I didn't realize any profit in the position. So that's the reason I've hesitated entering up here because I don't want, I, I, if I, if I enter here, the problem is if I take a short here, I won't, I won't assume profit until about the 48 to 47. And I don't see that happening within the next five minutes. So that's why I'm hesitant on entering the short trade on the ES and I took the trade on the NQ instead because I could see that potential to profit immediately. So yeah, I had a nice run, 77, dude, it's nuts. Uh, 150, 50, and 300. Apex sizes are you trading? 50K order upper. So I have a PA with 50 and then I have, a, I'm working on a 150 and a 300. And then I have my personal account too that I do trade, but that one's a small account. The NQ one is the one that's bigger. It's and it's a uh, 300k, and then the ES one here is um, I trade. I only trade the ES on my personal account, and then I also trade the ES only on my personal account, my PA, and then my also my 150. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. Thanks. I appreciate that. But yeah, I have uh, a few accounts. I don't really think you need that many, though. I would just two. if you just trade one ticker, you just need one or two. Unless you're trying to like do the whole copy trader thing, then go nuts. But. Wow, 33 people. Is that real? Is that clickbait? Oh my God. Oh no, 26. Uh -huh. Oh, 32. Oh my God. Wow. Hi guys. Hi. Welcome to the stream. <laughs> Let me see. Uh, let's see. So 14 votes. You guys said yes. Okay. I'm glad the NQ trade made sense to you guys. That's great. That's good to hear. And anyone here new, welcome. Let me know if you have any questions. Um, currently short the NQ. Um, if you get in here a little later, I explain my entry, my take profit, kind of the, how I was identifying the flow going into the DOM on the NQ and then and where I was assuming profit and why I walked you through the whole thing. Um, so if you do want to uh, get more info on that, I recommend going back. I might go back today at some point. Yeah, Kiwi woke up. She wakes up early though. I think she's up usually like around the same time I am or before because my fiance gets up at 4 a.m. Pacific. Just uh, But <coughs> I think she's up from 4 a.m. She just doesn't make noise until... The sun comes out, which the sun right now is peeking through. As you can see, it's golden hour here. You can see some of the sun hitting my face right now. I need to fix that actually. There you go. But yeah, Kiwi's up. Um, so yeah, I'm going to put some chapters up to the stream today to kind of put in the, that initial NQ trade scalp. It's a hybrid trade, as I tried to explain it earlier. Um, but yeah. Thank you guys for being here. Anyone here on the stream right now, guys? 30 people. That's quite a amount. Okay. Just patience until one minute. We got news in like in a minute. I'm gonna take this OC I'm gonna take this off and just gonna hold it. Hold the full two. Uh, I figured they would give me profit by now, but they didn't, so I'm just gonna hold two and I'll take i I'll take profit on a spike down, wherever that is. Hit the thumbs up, guys. Hit the thumbs up. You heard the man. <sighs> Sorry, that Celsius hit different today, man. Shit. Um, There's a weird spot to be in. I think they're going to drop this like a rock, but I'm not going to bet on it. 
the NQ is it's weird because if you look at the charts between the NQ and the ES, they're literally at different points. Look at the, the yeah, they're the NQ is like right at support, and then the ES is right at resistance. It's really fucked up. Oh, there you go. There's, there's a move. Just give it some minute to resolve. I'll, I'm gonna take profit on one, but I want to see what they do on the NQ. See how low they can spike this. This is probably as low as they're gonna bring it right now. Let's see. They can hold it below 68. I'm gonna hold this and I'm not gonna take profit. Okay. Right. See they hit 50. Um I think 600s if they do bring this down. 620, 600, something like that. Alright, I'm gonna take profit right here on one. I have one left. Okay, right at 40s. Is that the low? Right before they bounced it. Oh no, wait. Yeah, they're coming back. All right. Don't assume that this is the trend yet. Just give it a minute. The trend isn't down yet. They might be luring someone in. Just give me a minute. They're building value here at 49. The ES hasn't even gone below 46. So it makes me a little concerned for the downside. I think they want to move it back up. 38.50 the low. Now they're doing lower. I think 38 is a good area where they should try to reverse it. I don't know if they will. There you are. Look at that. Oh my God. 30s. That's uh, 60 points now. Very nice. Very nice. Nice trade. Thanks, Aaron. I appreciate it, man. I, I love Aaron. He's always so supportive, man. Anytime I take a trade and, you know, he's, he's always like, nice trade, Rick. Thanks, man. I really appreciate that. <laughs> no, I'm serious. I, I'm not being sarcastic. I hope it doesn't come off that way. I do think it's great that you do that. You're very consistent about it too, so I appreciate that. There we go. Some more rips lower. There's the NQ short. Hang out. This is why I don't care like trading micros. Look at that. One micro is worth 120 bucks. That's nuts. I made 900 bucks on trading the NQ yesterday just using micros. That's insane. And it was 10 micros. I never traded more than that on the NQ yesterday. Let me see if I have it here. This is a 45. This is an area where they should pause it on the ES. Um, let's see what they do here. This is a key area here for them. Bouncing the NQ at the 20s. Damn. All right, I said the 20s. Oh, well. I'm going to hold this thing, see where it takes me. I'll be right back, guys. People, they love. Okay, here we go. Let's see. All right. They're up. Uh, I think as long as they hold 45s on the NES, they can find a bottom. But I'm not very trust trusting of that bottom being formed. But if you're long, that would be something I'd be holding on to. The idea that 45s are holding pretty well. But 
I have a downside bear uh, bias at this moment. As long as we're below the 60s on the NQ. As long as we're below the 60s, the five, the 660s, I have a downside bias on the NQ. So I'm waiting for price to come back in on the ES to see if I can find a short near the 50s or so. Somewhere between 50, 52. I would like a short there and then I'll take profit at 48, 46 on part of the position. Uh, if we come to 52-ish area. So that's kind of what I'm looking for. I want to see the ES pop here and uh, come back into 52s, 50 zone, area, whatever. I'll short there and then cover some at 48 through 46. Um, and then my stop will be at the high of that 54 area. Two point stop, four point take profit on partial, and then the rest would be 42 to 38. And then from there, then we see what happens. I'll hold a runner for that. So there's the plan, okay? There's the plan for you guys. Anybody that wants wondering what I'm looking for, I want the 50s. I don't want it here. I'll be right back, guys. I'm helping my son get ready for school. All right, all right. So this is what I'm looking at, okay? On the volume prof on the footprint. They're coming back in pretty well, but I want to short somewhere around here and I want to take profit here, some of it right here at this area where the volume is, okay? This is kind of the entry and this is the partial take profit on the pro on the position and then more at below that. That's kind of the idea here between the trade. We'll see. They're not giving me high enough to want to enter, unfortunately. <clears throat> so I'm just being patient, waiting for that price to come in. If it doesn't come, then that's fine. No, the, 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 um, the, e so... The data on all on all my DOMs, even this one, this is the ES data, this is the NQ data, not the micros, and then this is also the full ES data too, right here in this one. All of my DOMs are the regular, uh, the bigger size contract data. So whatever you see here is the ES data, but I'm trading the micros on it. Does that make sense? Not giving me that price. Oh, okay, cool. No problem, man. No problem. They hit 50, 50, 50. Oh, dude, don't tell me. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Why am I holding? This is the this is the zone, guys. This is the same zone. Fuck, I missed it. This is the volume node. You want to see absorption here? I'm mean, being all stingy, waiting for 51. So I'm gonna I'll try it here at the 50, 50, 50, 50 or 50, uh, 49, 50. This is the volume node that I explained earlier. I, my chart was moved over, so I couldn't see. This is where I wanted to see absorption take place. Look at that. We kissed it to the very fucking tick and I missed it. Let's see if they bring it back. I'm going to I'm going to put my cursor over it cuz I want to see if I'm going to get filled on it. I'm not going to put a limit order cuz I want to see absorption take place there. I don't want to get in right away. I might have missed it there, man. That sucks. Oh well. 
<clears throat> they're they're building a nice value to the upside. So this value forming here is pretty bullish, um, right below the 51. So I'm still gonna wait and see. I want to short here. I want to see what price action looks here at the 50s. I want to see if they can absorb the orders, and I'll enter a short here. Give me a minute. I'm just watching the flow. Yeah, no, I don't like that. Um, the same reason I could tell the flow. So, for example, or, or what's bullish? The footprints? Uh, because what, what the context, right? The context, like you sold off aggressively 10 points, and then the bulls uh, fought tooth and nail to come back in. And not only did they fight tooth and nail, they absorbed, they came in with, with size. There, there's, a, there's a lot of volume here. Right. And, and what happened is the context of how we came down, we came down, we bounced off the 45, right? The first, the first area that the bulls needed to defend. And then not only did they defend, but they also showed up in size and it participated on the move up all the way up. Yes. Yes. You ready? Okay. I'll be right back guys. I will be right. Yeah. So that's, that's why I say that's bullish because it's the context of what happened going into the area and what they did as a result on the way back in. Wait a minute. I'll be right back. Um, I'm going to take the short here. I'm not going to, I'm just going to take it free-handed um, because I'm going to step out after I help my son get ready for school. God damn it, they're moving it lower. I don't know if they'll fill me, but I'm going to put OCOs in a minute and see if they can fill me at 50. I'm not willing to overpay. They're not going to fill me, are they? Ah! <laughs> they're coming to the... There we go. They fill me. All right. Let me put some OCO orders here. Um, it's small size. Again, I'm not trading big this week at all. I don't, I, it's not, it's not an opportune time to be trading in size. You're going to have enough volatility to make up for the smaller size in days like today. So where's that note at here at 47? Shit, that's too close. I'm going to do 46.50. I usually like four points minimum, but I'll do 46.50. I might, I might not get filled, but we'll see. Um, and then the other two, I'll just hold. If this is not a really great trade short setup. I'm just, I want to say I'm just front running it the best way I can explain it um, because I'm going to step away for a little bit. I'll be right back. All right, <clears throat> birds going nuts. They're building value here. I don't, I don't like this action anymore for the shorts. Um, because they're forming. Look at this. this. This is what I don't want to see. I don't want to see a bunch of transactions fill here. I want to see rejections off this area. Rejections. And instead, there's participation from the bulls trying to with, withhold the the, the 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 area itself. It's becoming more of a hazy, grayish, um, unknown 50-50 zone the more we trade in between the high and current, high and low of the day, okay? So, oh, it's going down, cool. So when this happens, when you get a, a high formed and then a low formed, and then as you head into the middle, you get a lot of participation like this, then it becomes very 50-50 flipped. Very 50-50, in my opinion, just based on the participation that's taking place. These orders are getting filled on both sides. Both sides are trying to, in this case, right in the middle, think of it as like a tug of war. This is the middle of the rope. 
and this is the, the bulls, bears, and they're right in the middle and they're both participating. Okay? So, I don't know. I don't like when that happens. You said sellers are getting absorbed. Um, I mean, yes, and they're also getting aggressive. So there's definitely a, a, a there's definitely a move coming from this area. In which direction? My bias is to the downside as long as the NQ is below 60, 660. Okay, that's the reason I more as more or less also wanted to take the short because we were below 660 as well while we were trading at the current previous morning high. But the NQ looks like it's getting momentum to the upside if you watch the flow on the DOM. So you know, it might not be a great trade. Um, and I didn't say I I said when I took the short on the ES it wasn't really a great trade anyway, unfortunately. But I wanted exposure because I um I missed the first spike down. We'll see. As long as the NQ stays below the sixties, I think we can rotate a little lower. Um, how much is the question, right? I'm not sure. <clears throat> yeah, we're back in the 50-50 spot. I don't really know what to do. But long as the NQ again below 60, that's the only reason I'm I have con I'm I have conviction on the short for only that reason alone. That's it. Um it's not high conviction at all. It's just a very flimsy reason that can be invalidated quickly if we start to hold above the 60s on the NQ, okay? That's pretty much all I'm watching is the NQ trade. Um, and I'm also watching where we are on the ES on a chart basis, right? Where we are in terms of volume profile. But here's the 47. I might need to move my order. There we go. You feel me? Oh, they're going to do the asshole thing and not fill. Oh, there you go. So I got filled on three. Uh, I have two left. Okay. So the rest of the two I will ride. Ride. I will ride. What with the spike on news, would that have exhausted any trap buyers from the open? Yeah, anybody that was here, anybody that's here is essentially stuck. Anybody that's pretty much like around this area, they're pretty much stuck, or if not already stopped out for the most part. Um, there still might be some of those still holding a position, don't get me wrong. Because everyone trades differently, right? My assumption is those they got stopped out on the news already. So they gave me that four, oh, motherfucker. <laughs> so four, they're they're bullish. This is very bullish, okay? Uh, they. I'm gonna close this out. I don't like this. I'm gonna close the long on the ES, on the short in the ES. There, I'm gonna hold the NQ. The way we reversed off 46 was very bullish. I'm not down to hold that. So I took those, uh, took the portion of whatever made profit I made and just closed it. This can still go lower again as long as we're below 60, but I'm just not a fan of, of that kind of reversal pattern when they when they're both trading near the low side of that current range. And the NQ's reversal as well was very aggressive. Okay. Because I have cushion on the NQ trade, I'm I'm willing to hold it. I don't have two with that. Do I have two? How many short con contracts do I have one? Alright, let me close this out. It should be one. There you go. I only have one. Look, check it out, guys. Only one MNQ. I already took profit on the four that I had. But this looks bullish overall. The way we rotated back up was very nice. Now the only missing piece of the puzzle is for the ES to get the NQ get above 60s. If this starts to fail the 60s, I'll get back in. But I just the flow that just came in, the sorry, the flow that came in from here and then here on the 40s. While they both were trading lower, it was very bullish, but they're getting rejected at 60 again. Womp, womp, womp. My entry was at 50, so I'm open to re-entering at 50 with the two micros that I closed out. 
Um, but we, I have to see them come back and retest. I'm willing to do, do it within the free, a few ticks from my previous entry. So there's this distribution. It's playing out. When we were right here, check this out, guys. When we were right here, I said this is the distribution for the most part, right? Right there. So 55, we didn't really get there. But, and then 45, 46. It's working out in that area. This is, we're still stuck within balance, right? Look at where we're at right now. So there it is. There's the blueprint. of uh, If you're a bull, you know, you know what to do. Get long at 46s. And they rewarded you for it, right? 46. Every time you come to the lower end of distribution, they reward you with balance. And you take profit here and then and, and then wait and see if they give you value or high. Okay? That's why the distribution is so important um, when I take trades. Does it look like they're putting catch on the NQ on the bigger range? 30? Yeah, it's 30. They're doing it with 30 and 60. Or if you want to get even smaller, it's like 55 and 45, something like that. They're playing, they're doing the catch thing there too. Um, between the 45 and about the 55-ish. You know, they go as high as 60 sometimes, but yes, they're doing that as well there. They do it all the time. Um, whenever, after a big move for a little while. I'm going to be stepping out right now a little bit because I got to take my son to school. All <clears throat> right. You ready, buddy? Yeah. All right. I'll see you guys in a bit. I'll be back long on for uh, 940 per ICT concepts targeting the 60s. Well, I can see the long thesis. Again, I mentioned I was I closed my short out for that reason. I didn't like the the bear um, the bull run up there. I'll be right back, guys. I gotta I gotta leave.
All right, what's going on here? Market hasn't moved. Uh, let's see. Did I do that wrong? Shit. <laughs> Why is it upside down? What the hell? How's it look? Let me see. Oh shit. That's weird. Wait. I know why. There we go. Is that better? There we go. Okay. No <laughs> we do nothing. Wow, this is nuts. Let's see. Any comments? Long, okay. I was waiting for 46, see if I can get filled. Might get stopped out anyways. Yeah, I run my stop. Too tight and stopped out. Wish I would have gotten filled at 44. My stop was 43, got saved. <clears throat> Thanks, Scott. He said, welcome back, sir. I'm gonna short this year. Oh my god, not 20. Bro, get the hell. Why is that happening to me? Who's modifying my freaking orders? <laughs> I'm gonna short this year, honestly. Um, it's too, it's, it's a little low for my entry, but I'm only taking two micros. Um, the reason I'm shorting this is this, they're stuck here, bro. These buyers are not being rewarded. Okay. And then we're below 60 again. We haven't been able to get above 60 on the NQ. We tried. They certainly tried, but they failed. So I'm shorting just two micros. I had five. I took profit on three. So I'm just going to short. I'm going to enter a position three points lower from my entry, give up some of those profits from that initial trade, and then see if they can give me that downside move to the 38, where I'll take one off, and then go from there. But I think they trapped a bunch of bulls up here, honestly. They got to get hold above 60 on the NQ, and they haven't been able to. That's the unfortunate part of the long side, the long thesis. Yeah, yeah, it is. The distribution is on top today, which is not good. Pretty bearish. Distribution from a volume profile perspective. It's all at the 50s, like literally the mid to high 50s. On And then the NQ is the same thing. It's all at the 680s, 660s. Or 665, 680s uh, is where all the distribution is. The delta is just selling. Yeah, that's all we've had. I mean, the past few prints. But, and then and then if you look at the cumulative delta, it went down from 12K down to 5. They gave up half of it. So the sellers are coming in today with, they're trying to transact as much as possible. Yeah, oil is 77. Marvelous. Marvelous. All right, so we got a few long attempts. Looks like my stop was 43. They brought it down to 43. Oh my God, didn't, they did not just spike it lower to take stops. God bless their hearts, terrible. But what, wouldn't your stop, wouldn't, shouldn't your stop be like below the overnight session? Low, like 42, below 42? Why was it 43 and 44? If the overnight session low on the ES out on 5 a.m. is 42, shouldn't your stop be below that for a long? Yeah, I hit 44, that's the low, but then there's 43, but shouldn't, well, yeah, I guess everyone's different. Delta was just selling. All right. If it reaches 43, it is going to 42. There was an imbalance at 43, so it kept it there. Oh, okay. Well, I don't disagree. If it's 43 for sure, I, I can see 42 for sure. No doubt. I like the, uh, from a, from a trap trader perspective i like the fact that they ran it down here and then they trapped sellers that are trying to um um they trapped sellers that were trying to uh short at the low of that range uh is your 52 the line on the sand on the es well 52 is the top end of this current range you know like here this is where the you see the, the previous print that's the highest they've been able to bring it to 52 so yeah I want five ticks lower than the previous low. Ah, okay, five. Okay, gotcha. But 
But yeah, that's that's uh, my stop loss. Oh wait, yeah, is, is your yes, yeah, fifty two is my stop loss. Yes, two, and I only have two. Again, I took five, and then I took profit on three at forty six fifty. I just jumped in on two. I had to chase it lower when I got back right now. Um, and then I, again, I, as long as we're below the sixties on the NQ, I don't I don't see this going any higher, unfortunately. They bounced it off the twenties when I uh, the market uh, the level I gave earlier as we were selling off. I unfortunately took profit at the 30, so I didn't capture those extra 10 points. I only have one micro left, but I'm going to let this thing run and see where it takes us if we go any lower. I'm not sure if we do. I think 600s, and then we see. I'll kind of manage it once we hit to 600s and see where that takes us. At that point, it'll be 80 points. But that's, that's not here, neither here nor there. We still have a ways to go before we hit that level. I'm just assuming right now. I'm not really... I'm not really sure if they bring it that low. 46 keeps keeps holding. So they keep trapping shorts down here at the 46. Every time they bring it down, they absorb price at the 45, 46. I, I am also known as liquidity provider, hence the market always coming for my stops. <laughs> yeah, you got to really work on where you're placing your stops in if that's the case. You know? Um... If, if you're always getting stopped out, then that means you're doing something... You, there's something you need to do a little better whether that's either ed having a better entry so your stop is a better area or just having more risk in terms of where your stop is from a nominal value perspective. Um, one or the other has to change. I would go with trying to find a better entry so you can keep your risk mitigation the same, something like that. So wherever you would place your stop, maybe place your bid order there instead. Wherever you are looking to enter, think, okay, where would I put my stop? And then you'd be like, okay, I'm going to put my, my entry there instead and see if the market comes and fills me. And then try to test that out. And if that works, then, you know, you got yourself a, a new way to enter your trades. Let me know if that makes sense. You know, like if you're trying to get long here, you're like, where would I put my stop? And then you're like, okay, I'd put it here. Then, then put your entry there instead. <laughs> Yeah, they've dried up all the liquidity to the buy side. There's a bunch of stuff, but th th this is going to um, result in a 10-point move down, 35 or so. I think 38, honestly, is where I'm aiming for. Um, shit, not two. I want one. Um, I think 38, in my opinion, but we'll see. I'm not sure. I need to see the orders come through first below here. I don't even know if they break it down yet, to be honest. It doesn't. It looks like they're doing everything they can to hold price here. That delta is fucking flipping. Yeah, I have done that before. Just didn't think it would drop two points. Some candle mantra. Oh, okay, gotcha. Yeah, my stops are about five points most times. On the ES, the NQ is typically like anything between fifteen and thirty points. It depends on my entry. Sometimes they're less, but it really depends on my entry. And now we wait. This is the patience part of the trade, right? Where you just kind of wait and see. Damn, 22 likes? God bless your guys' hearts, man. That's a lot. Or it's so early in the stream. Thank you, guys. They're still holding air. <laughs> they are throwing everything they have out of here. Look at this. It's, they absorbed all the sellers here at the 45s. These right here. My goodness. They said, nah, bro, we ain't selling off today. Oh, no. NQ looks like it wants to rip from here. Yeah, I would. I this 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 today's trading session is so bipolar. It's weird. I, I'm surprised I managed to squeeze some profit out this damn thing. It's been so weird. This is my this is my overall blueprint. Okay, as long as the ES is below 52 and the NQ is below 60s, I think we can rotate lower. But that that's it that's all i have 
that's all for that's all I have folks <laughs> below 52 I think we can rotate lower below 60s as well in the NQ if those two either one of them invalidate then they both can squeeze that's the only thing I have going for me that's the only thing I'm waiting for is for that resolution to take place all right my entry on the ES was terrible but that's fine and then the NQ is a great entry nearly nearly the high of oh my god it's my short is from about five points below the current high of day interesting I'm waiting it out. I think it's going to go much lower. Yeah, just wait. I mean, there's the market's going to show its hand at some point, right? And right now, it's just like trying to take everyone's orders before it shows its hand. Only thing saving is the imbalance on ES from yesterday, I think. The imbalance from yesterday. Okay. So, yeah. If you look at a candle a candlestick chart here, it's it's funny to look at. Like what when you trade candlesticks, like what do you what do you make of this? This is nasty. I have a three, five minute, ten minute, and then also yeah, three, five and ten minute. And it's just ugly. On the ES, by the way, uh, the NQ, I haven't looked at the smaller time frames yet. I've been looking at the bigger ones. But if you're a candlestick trader, what the hell are you looking at right now? Like the past 20 minutes have been nothing but dookie. If you're looking at a bigger time frame, the two hour looks like it's at a, the NQ is at a focal point for a potential bounce. I'm looking at a two hour here. I always look at candlesticks. And I'm like, what would what would what would these candlestick traders be thinking right now? Trimming of a bull flag? Uh, yeah, I, I, that's true. Yeah, bull flag or what? Falling wedge maybe into the area? I have no idea, but um, yeah. I just I, I always look at charts because again I like to get in the frame of mind of what is everyone else thinking right now, right? As price is trading, what are they thinking? What do they see? And then whatever they see, I try to form a thesis around it, um, either against or for the trade, depending on the flow, right? So if there's a bull flag, but the flow is like absorption at the high end of the flag, then I know there's a bunch of trap pa pattern traders at the high end of the flag. They're anticipating a breakout, getting absorbed, and their potential stops are here on based on the flag pattern, and I'm going to take profit at that area based on that flag pattern uh, not panning out. So I use the patterns that people trade and, and acknowledge and see in their charts and whatever else they see. And then I, I use order flow in those areas that they're potentially either entering or their stop losses are potentially. And I, I reverse engineer trade ideas from that. So, yeah. This is very similar to yesterday, honestly. In terms of volume and just little literally to no little to no movement <laughs> oh boy ah. Ah. okay and uh journalytics let's see I'm willing to add one more short to my ES, but I'll wait for it to get around 47 if they can fill me there. I'll take one more. Not sure if they'll fill me, but I'm willing to add one more. Again, I gave you guys the principle as why I'm looking, why I think the movement to the downside is realistic. And that's all I have, just the levels, first price levels alone, you know, because those levels mean something to the bulls and bears, right? And so that's all you got to use, really. I think the NQ can drop. If it, if it, if NQ if the NQ does not hold 600s, I think we see 585, and then if that fails, then 520s, 510s. 
something like that. I don't know. In the ES again, 38 to about 25. The pre-market, I said that I wanted to get long around the, I wanted to see if I can get long, depending on what the flow looks like, from 28 to about 25, give or take. Somewhere around that area, there's a trade there for a long. But we'll wait for now. They're holding the 20s still. I wonder if the ES is waiting for the NQ to snap its neck at 600 and then it's going to give it up. Because they're holding price. They're, they're, the more they hold here in this area while the NQ goes lower, the more the trap for the bulls is. The, the more they're going to, the more pain they're going to have to endure on the downside. Okay? There's, there's so much volume that's getting filled here within 46 and 47 that if these bulls don't get rewarded, if the NQ does break 600s, then this should accelerate 20 points to the downside 10 to 15 initially and then after that we see what happens but it's just the more the more we hold lower on the nq and don't bounce the more fuel to the downside we have because the, the, they're filling tons of orders here look at this they're trying here but they aren't being rewarded the more volume the more capitulation right the more participation the more volume naturally there is so it's all dependent on what's, as to what happens here on the NQ. It's bouncing right now, and it looks like it might have found a bottom. But we'll see. I'm going to wait and see. Because volume, ultimately, what, what uh, the moves come... I'm not, I'm not going to add that third one anymore. Um, big moves come from volume, right? And the more volume that is either filled and trapped, the bigger the move as a result, or the more volume that you know, piles in on the move up or down, what have you, fuels the move. So, you know, volume correlates to expansion of price. So, just wait and see. This would be a beautiful long area if they squeeze the NQ from here on the ES right here. But, I don't know. Such weird flow today. What's green? We got uh, NVIDIA, Meta, Tesla, and then uh, APM. Okay. Weird. That's weird. 43 is two standard deviations. Mm, gotcha. Yeah, I mean, it'd be a good long, honestly. If the, if the NQ gets over 35s here and holds 35, I think you can flip long here for a potential squeeze, but we'll see. Coming back into my entry on this thing. It might have bottomed it out here at 16. We'll see. Anytime we have a rotation 20 points from the low on the NQ or high, 20 points, and then we hold above that 20 point mark, usually is the end of that rotation to the downside or upside, depending on where we come from. Okay, so here's the, the rotation area that they should be holding above 20 points from the low, right here at this zone. If they hold it, then the downside move is over potentially on the NQ. But they're rejecting it right now at the area. We'll see. We'll see. Anyone got any questions for me, guys? Let's see if we can do a poll here. Pretty boring so far, but here we are. So if uh, we get rejection at 36 and it's over, lights out. You gotta hold below 36 now on the E and Q. If we get over 36, I'm gonna end my short on the ES. <laughs> What's my favorite color? Red. My favorite color is red. What's your favorite color, Dave? Here's the 36, still absorbing price at 36 on the NQ, 636. Green, okay. That green, all right. <laughs> nice. Is that because of the P&L or, <laughs> or, or for real like green? 
You say it's red, but you own nothing red. Oh my god. <laughs> um, that's not wrong. That is not wrong. I don't own anything red. <laughs> that's my fiance, though, by the way. <laughs> oh man, the dread dollar bill, but not here in Canada. Oh yeah, Canada has like colored currency, right? Rick always is always in the green, but Rick's always in the green. Oh, the irony. That's <laughs> funny. That's funny. <laughs> Scott, thanks, man. I try to stay green, you know? I try to be consistent. More often than not, I do end the day green somehow, but there's been days where I've been red. Yeah, that's that's uh that's her favorite color. Her favorite color is green. So here's the rotation. I'm gonna have to close this short on the ES. Okay, they're they're coming back in above 35 and holding, I'm giving a little room to breathe before closing it out on the NQ. I want to see if they actually reject it here or not, and then I'll close out the ES short. I'll hold the NQ short no matter what because I, I my entries. Look at where my entries at. Five points from the high of day. God bless my heart. That's a great, I got to go back to where I don't want to text you because I'm off. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. Thanks for doing it on the chat. I appreciate it, babe. I love you. Bye. I <clears throat> see me a little heart. Sweet. All right, let's see. So uh, there, see, this is why I give the EQ a little time to breathe um, in case that rejection came through. I'm not saying this will reject fully, but I'm, I'm giving it some time to breathe. Um, I'm giving it some time to breathe before the, uh, I close out this NES short. I don't really feel like assuming the full stop because I can tell that the NQ is trying to rotate up. And the reason we sold off on the ES, right, is because of the weakness on the NQ. That's what dragged us lower. Was the NQ itself. And if the NQ comes back around and finds a bottom, then the ES should naturally try to gravitate higher as a result. So we'll wait and see. I'm giving this NQ some breathing room here to see if it's actually going to break up or down so I can close my ES short. Just being a little patient here, getting more data to see if uh, I should be closing it or not. You don't want to be haste on your end exits sometimes if uh, the reason you're exiting is because of a price level. You want to give it some time to breathe in case that uh, you close it too early. You know that That's happened to me many times where I close it immediately after closing about a price that I was interested in reversing the trade in. And then as soon as I close it, it, they reward me back lower in the direction I was trading. So that's why I'm a little more patient in trying to find an exit. I'm going to add one more short here on the ES. I have three now. Um, why am I adding red when I'm not even sure if I want to hold it? That's exactly why I want to add because I'm not sure. <laughs> the times, the times to add to your position, I've felt from a reflection standpoint is if you're ever long and you're like, I want to, should I add to this long? Should I add to the exposure? And the times that you don't feel like adding, that is the time you should add. That is like the best time to add, in my opinion. Now, it might not work out in this example, but you'll see that over the course of my trading career, you'll see I'll do this example again so at some point down the road. Whenever I have ever felt like I shouldn't be adding to a position, whether long or short, I do the opposite of what my intuition tells me to do or my mind tells me to do. Um, yeah, they're, they're running it. Bastards. Bastards. I'm going to close it here. Let's give it a minute. 45. Let me get 45. 45. We break 45. Okay. So that's kind of the, my, my philosophy when entering or adding to a position. When I'm the most uncomfortable, if I should add or not, that's when I add. Very counterintuitive. Right? It's not what you would naturally feel like doing. In trading, most times the opposite of what you feel like doing is probably the best thing to do.
I have my finger on the flat button right now. I'm waiting to see what happens at 6.45 on the MQ. Very low volume, very weak, um, very weird action, to be honest. It's 8 o'clock, it's not even late yet. They've already extrapolated all the volume for the day. You can tell the ES wants to run, right? Because the ES is outperforming the NQ, but the NQ is was really dragging it down. It's that toxic that toxic partner again, goddammit. If uh, NQ breaks 35, I'll add it to the short again. Right here at 35. If it breaks below and holds below, I'll, I'll add more shorts to this. Here's 35. I'm going to add one more right there. Ah, they didn't feel me. <laughs> oh, man. See, that was the right time to add. They, they started moving it lower. I'll wait and see if they can feel me. There you go. They, added, they filled me. Okay, so 45 is the level now, okay? This is the line in the sand right here, 45. You can see what happened at 45 on the NQ. Okay. So I have four micros now short on the ES, and I have one micro that I have holding from 80s on the NQ. They're holding 35, bastards. So 45 breaks with aggression, I'm out on the ES short. They're coming back. They're coming back. It's fine, guys. We chill. And we wait. And we relax. <laughs> the bulls are definitely making a stride here, trying to turn a page. Okay, They're holding the previous uh, low from this morning's dip and then they're trying to make their way back into the 60s, right? They're, 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 they have, they're trying to bring price back to the 60s and hold, but unfortunately have fell short every step of the way up recently, as of now. So um, we'll see. At some point, either buyer exhaustion takes place or the sellers have to release, uh, take their foot off the gas and let price move. One or the other will happen, right? There's 35 again, dipping below. I'm going to add another short probably. I want to add more to the ES short, but I'm, I'm being a little patient because the flow is not really telling me it's bearish. Right now, it looks like they're playing catch here again. Okay, right. The NQ is playing catch right now with the bulls and bears in this area. It's in the middle between the current previous, the previous swing high and the previous swing low. So this is an area to add to a position if you have, if you if you can identify the general direction of the flow. But yeah, it looks weak right now. I'm not adding to it though. I'm just gonna be a little patient here. I'm gonna take profit a little sooner. 43, 43 uh, take one, 42, and then 30, 38 on the other, and then hold one and go from there. Okay. Don't know if they give it to me, to be honest. I'm just, I'm holding based on the NQ flow. Does this make sense to you guys? Am I explaining this enough? Oh shit, that hurts. God damn. There we go. They're doing the dance here where they want to trick people. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm very cognizant that if they bring the NQ here to the 15s, 10s, whatever it is, and they aggressively bid the shit out of it, I am going to step out of the way and close my, my short. Because as they bring it lower here into, the, into a new low, those buyers got aggressive the last time we came in here. The last time we came in here, we bounced 20 points within a matter of a few minutes. Okay. So I, I'm, I'm aware that there's dynamite here waiting for the price. There's dynamite here. So I'm very cognizant of price action as we hit here. 
what's the reaction going to be like, right? You don't want to get in front of a train on, on bulls trying to hold price at this area. They filled in that inefficiency. What inefficiency are you talking about? On my, yeah, I'm assuming you can see it on the footprint. There's an inefficiency somewhere. What do you define as an in, what do you define an inefficiency as? An imbalance, I'm assuming. And if so, what in, what does that look like? What imbalance are you referring to? Forty six is key for the uh, ES right here. Okay, this area has been uh, an area where all the the bulls step in here. So no volume right now so far exchanged. There's the bounce, trying to come back in. They're making a higher low on the NQ here. Very light volume. Look at the fills and the DOM here on the ES. They're very spotty fills. Not a good time to be trading with this kind of price action. When the market ran up yesterday, just buy side pressure, no real sold contracts on the uh, 15 minute candle from 71 to 28 on the NQ. Ah, okay. So there's a volume node um, that left some gaps there. I'm assuming gaps on the NQ um, on the on the uh, blue, on the footprint on the NQ at this area. Makes sense. I think they have the bulls have a potential to ride it up here, but I I want to see what they do at 25 through 15. I want to see what they decide to do here at the low. They're back above 35 on the NQ again. Fucking bastards, man. They just don't let this thing up. <laughs> this thing's a joke. Oh, man. Yeah, I think they're going to they're gonna come for it. They're coming now. We'll see. I'm waiting again. Forty-five. That's my line in the sand. It looks like this time they have the ability to run it. We'll see. There's 45, they're right at the area again. What do they do? What do they do? <clears throat> this open. There you go. Birdie? So right at the 40s area again, see what they do here. This is the focal point of whether I close my short on the ES or not, right here, where we're at on the, on the NQ. And it looks like they want to run this this time around. They want to break 45, but I'm going to be patient and let it actually define if it's true or not. All right, you don't want to be closing your trades early. Administering patience here. And bears aren't giving. I don't even think it's bears. I think it's just lack of participation. Look, look at look at the overall like, look at the print. I mean, th this doesn't really look like a lot of volumes being exchanged, right? I mean, the, they did show up here in one tick, right? Pretty aggressively within these two tick values right here between 48 and some change or so, but there's not much like there's not much volume at all, you know. So it's it's the bears are showing up passively. They're not actively hitting the market. They're passively selling. Which can be a mixture of two things. Could be, you know, longs have limit orders to sell positions, 
or bears are actually hitting the market passively because there's no active market sell orders that I can see that are aggressively hitting the tape. If you're referring to inefficiencies as per TPO chart, 34 would fill the gap on the ES. 34? Yeah, I, th I think that's a great area. 34, 38, um, general zone. I think it's a beautiful area to try to flip long or maybe even see what, what potentially lies there. But this is why you're patient. This is why you got to have a level to define when to stop, close your orders, right? Because look at what happened. They came to the 45 twice now. And I would have been, if I in theory was afraid and didn't have a level that I'm working off of to identify why I should be holding my short, I would have been scared shitless and covered my, covered my position for a loss um, earlier. And I'm not saying I'm going to be rewarded. I definitely doesn't look like it yet. But the point is that sometimes you close trades too early for no reason. Okay? Just because you're in the red or because you've been sitting in the trade for too long or whatever issues you have with your trading psychology, try to use price levels as reasons to hold your position long or short. And by no means am I saying I'm, I'm going to be rewarded on the ES trade. The longer this kind of fidgets here in this area, the, the less conviction I have in this trade. Okay, But that doesn't affect the way I close a position. I still, ref I still refer to the same reason I got in and why I decided to hold it through. 38.50 is the value error from yesterday. Okay, cool. And 27 over the last week. Yeah, 27 through the 27 to 28. Uh, 28 to 25 is my zone that I'm looking for. And then 38 is from just yesterday's order flow. I didn't know it was value area. I just know it's like when they were trading or when, when price was price was trading there yesterday, I um I found it to be an interesting level to refer to later, based on the current flow they were having. Um, when 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 the when the exchange happened there at thirty eight, just what I saw in the dom that made me interested in thirty eight. But I'm glad to hear that it's value area. That's cool. It's always good to see more than one reason for a level to be important. This is a fucking joke, bro. <laughs> this price has done nothing. <laughs> oh my god, this is funny. How many paper cuts have they given traders today is my question right now. Like, I'm looking at the action, like, I'm like, fuck, dude. There's so many people that got stopped out back and forth trying to trade this chop. This is nuts. I used to be that trader. That's the reason I know that's happening, because I used to do it. I used to be that guy. So, yeah. Be careful out there with this little sideways chop. Just pick an area, right? Pick an area within distribution, in my opinion. I'm right in the middle of distribution on my fields, which is terrible, right? Um, and so distribution, boom. Right, and this is this is it right here. Yeah, good man, good, good. One wins, one loss. Low end, high end. There you go. This is your distribution zones. This is where you should be trading, long or short. Don't be like Rick and filled here in the middle. Get ripped off. So we're, we are about 10k delta, so about how, blah, blah, blah. so about half of those are bleeding. Yeah, yeah. So these are the areas you want to trade, okay? This is where you want to enter positions and then take profit and distribution right here. Okay? Don't do what Rick did today. He ripped himself off. <laughs>
I was short around the 50 at first, which is decent, and then I had closed it, unfortunately, for no reason. Um, well, there was a reason, but it wasn't good enough. It was a terrible reason. And to, I would have still been sitting on the short, right, um, had I still kept my original fill. So That distribution... Is important my friends let me ask a poll here do you guys use distribution do you use bell curve distribution yes or no there's no wrong answer here you know, just a question got one vote nice Oil's just fucking ripping. What's going on here, guys? <laughs> God damn oil. Uh, he said, after you explain how to use it and why. So I'm assuming yes. Cool. Glad to hear it. Glad to hear it. Um, we're gonna look at Zom. Where's Zom at? XOM. Yeah, 103. There we go, bro. 103, about to hit 104. It's the first level up on oil. Um, ESH. I gotta text my fiance, tell her to close some some of her oil position. I told her to get long zom a while ago. Oh boy, this looks like it's gonna rip on the ES from a candle perspective. Oh boy, I zoomed in on it. I got kind of scared. Yeah, this looks like it's gonna rip on a 10 minute time frame. The, the candlestick chart looks like it's gonna fucking rip. <laughs> oh man. We'll see. 45 is 10 points away, so we'll see what they do. But I, I'm looking at the candlestick chart on a 10 minute and it looks like it's like a fucking rocket. <laughs> Oh man, to do or not to do. I think again. I think that the reason the ES hasn't hasn't uh hasn't exploded is because of the the uh, XLK. It's the sector that's most red of all of them. I think. So it's dragging the ES down. Yeah, I think pff, the ES wants to rip, bro. I, I don't I don't want to hold this short anymore. I'm gonna close this out here. On the ES. I think the ES wants to rip. I'm I'm not. I'll get long the ES if they um they get over 45 on the ENQ, but it just looks like it wants to rip, guys. Yeah. See what happens here at the 45s on the NQ. I think, I, again, I just looking at the ES, I'm like, this thing looks like it wants to fucking rally. There's the 45 on the NQ. I'm willing to short the ES still, by the way, but I just, you know, depending on 45 here on the NQ. Oh man, are they gonna trick all these buyers into thinking the yes is gonna rip? I'm looking at a candlestick chart and I'm like, bro, it's gonna rip. But I'm also holding the NQ short because as long as we're below 45, I think we can sell off. But there's two stories being told to me here right now and I'm just trying to figure out which one is true. <laughs> weird spot to be in right now and decide if I should get long the NQ here or if I should yeah it's tough 
I should hold it. Like, I want to front run the run here on the end cube, but at the same time, I just want to hold this through and see what happens. I'm just going to sit on my trade until we break 45 and not flatten out on the end cube. We hit the value area high for the current session on the ES and just faded so far. It's not good. Which is 50 by 50, 50.5, 50 51. That's where the um, value area high, the start of it is. The start of the value area high on the ES. So just watching NQ here, same level, same area, 45. What are they going to do? They're both lying to you, just going to hold this their range so close. I don't think that's possible. But hey, I mean, I've, I've seen weirder things, so you're not probably not wrong. Good morning, chat. How we doing? What's up, tra uh, Intact Trader? Welcome back, friend. I have a short from 80s that I've been holding for a minute. <laughs> um, which is five points from the current day high. How are you doing, trading, uh, Intact Trader? I'm looking to get back in on the ES short, but at the same time, I'm waiting on the reaction up to 45 on the NQ. There, there's a story here, but they're not telling me which story is true. I don't know which one is true. I'd get my windshield replaced. Oh man, I'm sorry to hear that, but I'm glad you got it replaced. One trade break even. Okay, cool, man. Cool. Nice. Yeah, just, just administering patience here, right? Trying to wait to see what the hell the market wants to do. Again, as long as we're below 45, I'm kind of bearish biased a little bit. As long as we're below 45 on the NQ. If they hold above 45, they can hit 60s right away. So there's a trade there between the break of 45, get long, and then sell some into the 60s, and then hold the rest free in case they uh, run it past that. But uh, I'm not going to take that flip trade, but that's a trade idea for you guys. If they break the 45 aggressively, right, on the NQ, um, I think the NQ break can give you 15 points of upside, and then you can sell into that and then hold the rest in case that they uh, rip it past the 60s. I'm looking for a short on the ES as long as we're below the 45s, but I'm waiting for flow to pick up, waiting for volume to pick up. There's that rip here on the NQ. What do we do here, guys? What's gonna happen? What's gonna happen? Uh, uh, uh. Are they gonna break? Uh. This thing's annoying, man. Ah, <sighs> they're running stops here on the ES right now. No, I'm not using the footprint on the NQ. I don't have it open. Initial read is that we go into the previous value area just under 600 for a bounce, but not, it may just continue higher. Yeah, I agree that. That's why I think the reaction about 580s would have been key, right? 580s or so to see what the bulls wanted to do there, defend that previous breakout they had from yesterday. Um, but they didn't bring it down. They brought it down to 620s. We'll see. But yeah, not, not using an NQ, the up footprint. I've tried using the footprint on the NQ, but unfortunately I didn't feel it. Like I didn't, I didn't use it too much. I didn't have it open too long to be able to kind of gauge it, to know, how, you know, what, what, how to read it very well, the footprint on the, on the NQ. Um, I had to modify the settings a few times, you know, I did tick compression, I did imbalances changed, and I just couldn't for some reason get a good read on it. Um, if I'm sure if I devoted, devoted more time to looking at the footprint on the NQ, I'd probably get a better read at some point, but I couldn't figure it out. I just kind of gave up on it. I'll probably consider it down the road to add one. I just, I, overall, I'm more, my, main, my main focus on reading the NQ is just the DOM. The DOM gives me more inform enough information for me to know how to trade the NQ. I don't really need the footprint, I don't think, at this time. Um, might That may change, right? But uh, I just use the order flow coming in at the pace of the DOM here 
I just use the pace of this to kind of figure out what the NQ wants to do. I'm going to short the ES here. I'm waiting for 45 to break here, but I'm shorting the ES again. I'm going to use the previous high. I like the risk reward here against the previous high for a short. Agreed, but we're currently sitting right at the huge five minute bar, 30K contracts, which is 25, 30. Gotcha. Is that from like a resting limit orders on the downside? So I like the risk reward here just because the high of day is like pretty close. They got absorption here at the 51 and a, and a few ticks. Uh, and then also, here are the three reasons I'm sure. I like the risk reward, right, from where we are. I like the absorption here from a very small, small kind of area where it's. And then also the NQ is like teetering between 45 and 40s. So those are all the three reasons I'm entering short. Okay, give you guys my rundown as to why. I could be wrong, of course, but this is kind of a pivotal area where they'll, they'll either give you, either tell you you're wrong right away or they'll reward you right away. And I'm okay with that. And I'm willing to add more to this ES short. But I'm not doing it yet. Stop dead at 6.20 this morning while I was watching from the lobby. Oh, man. <laughs> it's nuts. Yeah, someone came in at 6.20 and just defended it twice. They want to maintain that uptrend, that's why. You know, they break 600s, they got 580s, and then from there, if they don't, then bam, drop the hammer on them. But we'll see. Because right now, it looks like we may just range between 710 and 600s, give or take. No idea. I'm going to add more to this short on the ES. Um, and then, so I have 10 micros short here. I'll take some off at about the 48, two, and then two more at 47, and then go from there. I gotta take five off. I'm sorry. I gotta take more off than this. Uh, take five, six. I'm taking six off, and I'll have four. We'll see. The bulls have the upper hand here, of course, but I I just don't like the flow on the NQ. They're, the NQ keeps getting bid though at the thirties. That's good for the bulls. It's pretty good. They're telling me I'm wrong, guys. They said, you're wrong, Rick. Why are you shorting this? There's the 45 to the 60 right now on the NQ. Let's see if they hit 60. So it's the open. Such boring action. Hmm. What happened to your windshield, man? Was it a an animal run into it? Happens if you're driving at night out in the depends where you live, I guess. But I think I hit a squirrel once. Yeah, driving to Arizona. Late at night. Accident. Not in my window though. You're going fast enough. Those things can things fuck you up, man. As far as like your car damage you do on the cars. And fiberglass. They're still absorbing price here. Bulls definitely have a nice footing here on the way up. Very nice bulls. Way to go guys. Good job. Good job. Just a crack, okay. Oh, rock, oh man, those are the worst. I got one too recent, uh, a while ago. I think five degree weather just expanded and grew. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah, the little rocks, they chip the windshields and then it just expands from there, especially with weather permitting. It sucks. I'm glad you got it fixed, man, that's great. Yeah. I had one in my previous car in the very bottom left by the driver's side, very small. Very small, like not even a chip. It was more like a, uh, it, like took a piece off the glass 
off the, the layer. It's like a thick layer, right? I took the top of it, but it never expanded or grew, which was great. I sold the car, but it never expanded or grew more than that. It was weird. I was expecting it to crack at some point and expand, and you know, the whole thing it does. <sighs> it never did. So oh, kind of grateful. No longer have the car, but that's a few years ago. Yeah, I had the Nick from probably two years and then five days it went from, oh. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy how it wants to like, it'll stay there for years and then out of nowhere it just <laughs> just grows and expands. It's nuts. Like you were fine a few days ago, bro. What for years you were fine. What happened? What changed? I, I just... Such weird flow. I, I, again, I, they can't reclaim the 60s on the NQ. 660s, they're trying though. But they seem so weak on the way up, man. I don't know. The pace, if the pace of the Dom doesn't change on the NQ, they're going to have to capitulate. Because the ES wants to run. Energy sector, financials are green, slightly, but green. Industrials are a are, uh, quarter away from being green. The, the, the ES wants to run, but it's not... The Russell is down three quarters of a percent, so that put probably putting some weight on the ES2. And then you have the Qs, they're down 0.3. Th so there's the weight, right? That's the reason the ES can't break out. It wants to. It really wants to. You got uh, energy sector almost up a percent. The financials are teetering between positive and negative, but the heavy, the weight is getting hit by all those the small caps and the tech sector, right? So. You have some wind that it has to work through to break out, unfortunately. And I'm not saying it's not possible. You can see the bulls are making the efforts to break. Bum, bum, bum. There's absorption up here, obviously, at the 50s, as expected, since it's the current session high. But there are not enough buyers. I'm going to add to this short again on the ES if we break 45 right now. If we break 49 and drop like a rock, look at all this delta. Uh, you know, buyers are trying to pick up price, but unfortunately have not been rewarded. You can see the delta there. The odds are to the upside again, but until they, sh until they break 60 on the NQ, energy is even going higher now. It's almost up a percent. It's up 0.9. Financials are what are they? They're, try, they're green, but they're they're just lagging a little. Point oh five. Okay. Where's the where's the Russell? Russell's still red. Hmm. Again, if they break forty five here like a rock, I'm adding to the short on the ES again. I'm adding five more. They haven't broke forty five yet. They're still at the level. I'm just referencing the same levels all morning on the NQ. Shit, it's 8.36? What the fuck? Damn. I feel like this morning went by so quickly. Okay, if, we, if this is the value area high, so if you want to short, this is kind of the area of interest to initiate positions. This is the VAT distribution high uh, for the current session. And then the, yesterday's point of control um, for the most part from from the overnight and yesterday up here at 52. So this is an area that bears want to defend on the ES to the downside. And then you should assume profit are on the 48s, which is the middle or the point of control for the current distribution or the current session um, is the 48, 948. So four points of spread be between your entry and here, which is pretty decent. That's always what I'm looking for. But it's contingent upon the NQ here and what the hell it wants to do. I'm going to add another one here. I'm just a little vigilant here on 45s on the NQ. I want to add more size to the ES short. The more this trades, the more this struggles to break the 40, uh, the 60s on the NQ, the more conviction I have to the downside. But I'm just being a little patient trying to add here. Not 
yet. Just watching. I'm like a hunter. Oh, I had this feeling yesterday. Um, you guys, anyone here play Call of Duty? When you guys were younger, I'm not sure if you still play. I don't. I don't play. But when I was younger, let me actually close this poll. Uh, bell curve distribution. Some of you guys said no. Okay. If anyone has any questions as to what the bell curve distribution is, feel free to ask. Let me do a poll here. Yeah, yeah. I used to play a lot too, man. Anyone did you play COD? Search and destroy. I'm going to do a little and you're going to be like why the hell does this have to do with trading? It really doesn't, but I'm going to I'm going to kind of tie into what um tie into what uh tie into something. I hope it makes you guys laugh. I I play PUBG. Um I don't know what that is. I'm sorry. They're coming for my stop. I was collecting the whole Call of Duty series and best was Modern Warfare. I agree. I, Modern Warfare 2 is like my entire, like three, two years of my high school. <laughs> That's all I did for like two years. Play Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 with my friends. Like all I did. COD or die, bro. Quick scope your ass. <laughs> Game is fun. Thinking about the stuff I did playing that game. <laughs> we played the Rust card so badly, it was so fun. Yeah, that when you play them in the small map, they had 1v1, bro. 1v1 quick soaps. <laughs> oh, man. I'm willing to add to this short, but I'm waiting for the NQ to tell me when to add. The ES is key. The the ES keeps inching higher. Wait, what happened? The financials just ripped. Wait a minute. What the fuck? Hold on, hold on, hold on. What the hell just happened, bro? What happened? Did they flip, or was I wrong the whole time? Oh, banks are the one that's been green. Okay, not not XLE. Sorry, but XLE and XLF are ripping today, like massively. They're like on a tear. It's nuts. I open up their charts real quick. It's like their performance for the day, and they're fucking ripping. It's beautiful. All right, so I'm getting closer and closer to that ad ad on the NG on the ES again. Got to break 35 here, and I'll add another one. Okay, let's see what the poll's at before I add. I'm waiting for 35 to clear. If 35 clears on the e NQ, I'll, I'll add more to the ES short. Some of you guys said yes. Some of you guys said no. Most of them said yes. I'm going to end the poll there. Now, and I'm, I'm, <laughs> so if, if you did play, you'll understand what I'm talking about. So if you guys played Search and Destroy, there's a moment in time where you're playing, and I'm sure it's happened to you at some point, where you're like the last alive. You're like the final, the final man standing or last man standing. Did, did that ever happen to you guys playing search? Like, you know, in search and destroy, if you play, like if you die, you don't come back until the next round. Right. And then there's always a point where like, you're the last one for some reason that's left alive and you got to fight about, you got to, you got to battle against like five other dudes or four, how many ever are alive on the opposing team. That's kind of what it feels like when I stream my live for you guys. I feel like I'm the last man standing in a search and destroy game and I have to perform for all you guys. <laughs> the pressure is real. I'm not sure if you guys ever felt that pressure, your last man alive and you're trying to make it for the team, make that round, you know, because you feel like everyone's rooting for you even though they're all dead and they're watching you, you know, play. That's kind of how it feels like when I play when I play the market when I trade live. It feels like I'm the last man standing in the fucking search and destroy game in my Call of Duty. The pressure I feel is real. <laughs> I don't know if that makes sense to any of you guys, but I, if it does, cool. If it doesn't, I'm sorry. I don't really know how else to put it. The video game thing. They ain't breaking this thing. God damn it. <laughs> 
I want 35 to clear and I all the pressure don't don't want to screw up. Yeah, man. Yeah, exactly. Like I come in every day and I try to like piss excellence, right? And you know, God forbid I don't. Trading in video games make my heart pound. <laughs> my heart doesn't pound by any means. Like I'm pretty cool, calm and collective, but in the back of my mind there's this pressure that's like, bro, last man standing. Like you got to perform today, okay? These people are watching you. They're judging you. Trade at your best. To some degree, it kind of helps, but the other side of it makes me fearful, too. It's a weird thing. The, all the other traders are trying to 360 no-scope. <laughs> yeah, man, I'm trying to uh, tactically go about, around the map and, you know, try to find all the... I'm trying to play tactical here, out here with prone with ghillie suit yeah man i'm i'm trying to <laughs> anyway the, the all what i was trying to say is like i i i have um i have the <laughs> i have a, a lot of pressure i feel performing in front of you guys um as, and when whenever you guys are watching me train with trade live okay to some degree it helps I'm, i i perform well under pressure that is something that i i do really well for some reason i perform better in most cases, when I'm under pressure, I don't know why. Like, I guess my fight or flight mode is kind of really good. <laughs> I don't know what to devote it to. Anytime I've ever been stuck in a position where I need to figure it out or die, not literally, but you know, you get what I mean. I hope. Um, I, I do really well. I don't know why. Anyway, that being said, I'm probably going to get stopped out on this trade. The NQ is holding pretty well. Um, Volume's really low. I'm not sure if they're going to come for stops and then yank it. I have no idea. But it sure looks like the ES wants to run. You have some of the indexes green. The NQ is probably going to flip green at some point today if this continues. I'm not 100% sure. Um, XOK is down 0.4. Or RT, uh, Russell came up a little bit. We appreciate your great teacher. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. Uh, I just want to give you guys some insight as to like what goes on in my mind when I'm trying to trade in front of you guys. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised if they if they run stops here and then pull it down. Like that is what I'm anticipating is potentially the outcome here as we're trading in this area is like I wouldn't be surprised if they run it to about the 56, the overnight session high, squeeze out as many stops there as there are from the overnight and now and then and then reverse it back down. I don't know. That's just like what if I was trying to screw participants, that's what I would I would do. But we'll see. Still stuck in this trade. This has been really slow volume. My God. Oh man, they're teasing me here. They came right to it like we're near my stop and then they just skipped it. You must have not watched him last week. I think he tried to top tick the high three times. Uh, me? I'm assuming me. I don't know. Oh my god. Oh my god. Probably. You're not wrong. That was me yesterday. Probably. It probably was Tuesday. I ended that day red. Yeah, I, it probably was Tuesday. I don't remember what day it was. You're probably right, though. God damn. Here, watch. Um. There they come. There they are. Had a boy. Last week was a blur. I could have been two weeks ago. I don't think it was much. I don't think. I don't think I was in much. Uh, mixed merge together. Okay. Yeah. I don't know if you were here very much last week either. I have to move my stop a little bit. I have to. I'm trying to give the NQ room to breathe here. If it's either gonna break down or not, bro. And I don't want to get be a part of a fucking stop run as they run this thing. Damn it, there they come. Fuck. <laughs> they took me out. There's a stop run, see? There are these motherfuckers. They're fucking 
running the stops, assholes. Those are stops that got triggered. Do you see the zero by 600? Uh, there was a zero by 124, 0 073. These are all the stops getting triggered at the overnight session high. God damn bastards, man. I think they're going to squeeze. We'll see. This is annoying. Um, I'm still open to short, not just not the ES though. Hell, not right now. I'll wait till 52 clears. Below that, I'll enter a short. But the NQ is not moving up. This thing's stuck here. Yeah, there's probably more stops. This is what I said: is I think they would run into the, like the overnight session high, which is 57, somewhere up here, and take out stops. And then they do the yanking where they they finally bring it down like assholes, right? It's just like, that's just the games the market has to play. Now they're below all those stops they just filled. I'm waiting. If the NQ starts to give up 45s here, I'll enter the short again on the ES. I'll take it right there. Um, I'll leave the full stop on this one. That'll be my last trade for the day. I just... Mm, mm. Make personal question. Is your goal to grow your YouTube streaming presence or become a full-time trader? Become a full-time trader. I want to be a full-time trader, more or less. And then... Um, um, full-time trader... Uh, because I have an emphasis on real estate. Uh, I'm in the industry as, as from my jobs perspective, right? From my credentials perspective, I'm in the real estate industry. But my main priority is funneling money into real estate and then and then also actively trading. So any active profits I make jump it, roll into real estate. That's kind of what I do now with our active income is whatever W-2 income I make, I, I roll it into real estate, rent homes um, that are, we currently own, my fiance and I. And then we collect the, the cash and then roll it back so that's kind of the goal is to funnel money into real estate, whether local or not. We've gone to other areas to buy real estate. We went to go look at some areas this summer um, in Pittsburgh and other areas. So the thing is that like, I want to, of course, full-time trader by all means, but also um, I, you got to have other sources of income. Unfortunately, I don't want all the pressure on me to perform and make money every single day, right? Or week or week, week over week, there's going to be drawdown periods. Or it's just kind of hard. I've been through it, right? And my course of the year of my life of trading. And I know that's not always a win-win thing that you go through. There's, there's, you know, there's slumps in your career you're gonna, you're gonna funnel through. And I want to make sure that I minimize the amount of stress I feel to perform from an income perspective. Oh no, I don't. No, I'm not slum lord here, bro. <laughs> So I'm in the real estate industry uh, for a career, and then also uh, I understand the power of real estate. So I, I funnel, we funnel our money into that, and then we kind of um, that's kind of what maintains our lifestyle for the most part. And then our active income, constantly in court, rough business when you're renting the level of house. Yeah, it just depends on how you conduct business, right? You don't do business well. You don't have happy clients. I mean, think about it. The, the clients are, are your renters. If you don't have happy clients, you're going to be in court a lot. All you got to do is just, I haven't had any problems recently at, at all since starting this. Started this about four years ago. And I haven't had issues, thankfully, because I have a heart. Because <laughs> I have compassion. I don't know. You know, like I, I don't put my money, I don't, I don't put money in front of, others' well-being or, or standard of living, right? As long as you take care of people, they'll take care of you. One of the, one of the most cost-effective ways to make money on real estate, so if you're renting, is to take care of your client because the most expensive thing that comes down to in real estate is the, 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 the um, turnover rate. If you have high turnover, people are moving out of your apartments, homes, you know, you, you have problems. You have problems with turnover, you, that's your cost. You know, you're sitting on repairs you have to do to get it ready for the next tenants. You have vacancy costs that you're eating up to. 
So you know, if you if your client is 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 um your client, the customer is happy and they want to stay, and your reasonable rates, you don't try to get market, you don't try to squeeze every single rent dollar out of every single, you know, every time you rent a home, just leave it somewhere reasonable price. You know, I don't ever try to fucking raise rents to market. I leave them below market because I understand life's rough, man. You know, and I, I, I rent things at below market rates to make sure people are comfortable where they live. They don't want to move. I take care of them in case they're there if they have problems. And then that's good business for both sides. You know, they are able to financially save money and stay renting if they choose to because they enjoy how I take care of them. And they also enjoy that they're able to have enough excess cash at the end of the month because they're not paying more. Um, then the, the next person on rent, then, you know, it's a good business to be in if you just have a heart and you also understand that there's a balance. So um, it, it, it sucks, you know, it sucks when people are slumlords or don't care or just are greet, really greedy, things like that. They, they ruin the industry for all everyone else. But yeah, that's pretty much the, the, the goal there. Yeah, and he's breaking below 35. I already have 15 micros short here at the 54. Um, I'm looking to take some off at 49, 48, and then go from there. I'm going to end the stream soon, but um, yeah, I think NQ is going to break down here if it breaks below 35. We might hit, we, we're probably going to head to the lows. I'm still holding this damn short from 80s on the NQ. <laughs> I only have one left, mind you, but still. Uh, there's the 35s getting bid. Oh, boy. They just don't give it up. The bulls have an incentive to hold this, you know? Don't get me wrong. Um, but yeah, that's the goal there of the channels. I mean, I want to grow it, of course. Don't get me wrong. Like, I want... My main priority is just... I just... See, the thing is, I've been doing this for a few years, right? And um, I, I've gone through a bunch of fucking roller coasters through trading up and down. And it's taken me years to solidify and get a footing on what is trading. All I want is to simply, you know, stream live what I already do. I make money. I can show you guys my last week's performance, you know, I, but I, more or less, I want to teach people to mitigate risk and find better entries. So that way they can cut their learning curve and cut through all the frustration that is trading in hopes that they can get to the other side a lot more quickly than it took me. And in doing so, you know, if I provide enough value, then YouTube in theory should provide me a revenue stream for it because there's enough value in my videos that are free that YouTube, whether at some point my channel will grow and I will be paid as a result without having to request any money from anyone. Yeah, of course. It's good intentions, you know? I, I dedicate a lot of time to this. I don't make any money from it. You know, I allocate to make the videos at least 10 hours every weekend. To make videos. And, and then three hours of my morning, which is great. I appreciate you guys here. You guys are awesome to commute with, to talk to, you know, I, I get, I get a lot of value from talking to you guys, trying to teach you guys, you know, what I do and how I do it. If it means anything to you or not, cool. If it doesn't, you know, thanks for being here, but I get value from it on that, from that perspective. You're the first footprint trader that I made, made it make sense. Yeah, man. I, this is so there's a lot of noise in the industry when it comes to order flow, right? It's such a blank. It's such a buzzword now where like they, they there's a lot of touches on uh, a lot of touchy feel with the word order flow. It's such a big buzzword now in the trading industry, but they don't either. They don't understand order flow or they don't explain it in such a way where it makes sense to the masses that are trying to learn. And that's where the first that's where kind of my issue was watching all these videos on YouTube with, you know, people trying to explain trading or maybe not even explain trading just entertain and i i'm if i watch videos i want to learn something i don't want to be entertained so i figure there's a market for that they're holding the nq here man if they break 45 again i think that might be the final nail they need but we'll see this has been a slow day so far Okay, well, that's good. I can always make it simpler, you know? You guys just, the thing is that I don't understand the questions you guys have. So if you have, have, have refined questions on something that I'm explaining, then I can make it even simpler. I just simply wouldn't know where to start until the question is actually asked. I will simply explain it in terms that makes me understand if I was explaining it to someone, uh, someone else. But if you, have, if you have more refined questions, I'm more than happy to go into it. 
you know, and I'll even take trades just to prove it, you know, like example in the morning when I was trying to show you guys the NQ trade idea, I took the trade as an example, a small size because I didn't, I wasn't convicted on it. Kind of kills me that the NQ drops 20 points and ES held, makes me just think cutting the kids trade. Um, thing is that you got to consider the sectors that are green on the ES, you know. The ES is the financials keep ripping. They they were up 0.8 now they're up a percent and a half or a percent 0.5, and the, and then energy is picking up a little bit too. The Russell's picked up a little bit about 0.1 percent from 0.75, uh, but the tech sector is red. That's the reason we're red right now. If the industrial sector could picks up and goes green, then we poly rip. Right? You got to consider the components of the thing you're trading, the instrument you're trading. Damn, this is taking forever, man. I, 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 I do think they come into at least 50s, 51, 50 to reload for the buy side because it looks like there's kind of slow price action going on here at the high end. But that'll be contingent on the NQ. Bastard doesn't fucking move. Oh, NQ, you really, you're annoying, bro. It just does the same thing. It goes from um, 30 to 40, 30 to 40, highest 50. It's sad. Anyway, we are here and here we are. <laughs> Down 200 on the ES today. 255. Oh, dependent on whatever happens from this. 255 up 226 on the NQ. They're two separate accounts. We'll see. Boy, oh boy. I'm going to get off the camera. I'm going to start getting ready to head out. But I'm still going to be here kind of walking through the trade. There's 45 on the NQ. What do they do, these bastards? They moved it up to 50 now if you're looking at the range, but what's let's, let's see what do we got? Industrials are starting to go positive, just about 10.10 10 down. Uh Russell's going even lower though. Russell's now down again after being up from 0.6. It's kind of weird spot. Weird spot. Very odd trading day so far. There's a bullish tilt, of course, but the, the real move will come if the NQ gets over 660, I think, which is the open price on the NQ. We'll see.
I agree. It's definitely a low risk, high reward area. Um, if it pans out, right? I think it's a great low risk. You have a downside is probably that you know you can use the previous high, um, fifty seven what fifty seven twenty five as your high, which is three points, and then you have the uh, downside balance area, which is forty eight on the first area down, for your potential take profit area on the ES. That's where I'm targeting. I have the short of fifty four. I don't know if they'll give it to me, but at this point. It's a coin toss at this point, given the action. There's a lot of selling in this candle throughout that has me worried. Yeah, they can be using it as fuel for more upside, honestly. Just it's a tough area, nonetheless. Here's the question that I have that the, the thesis that I have, okay? We're we're holding we're going into the high of yesterday, but we have the unknown of earnings after hours, and we also have the unknown of um the Fed tomorrow. Will what are the probabilities of us making new highs into unknown earnings? Which I think they can be optimistic about, right? Given Netflix has reported, a few other companies have reported have been pretty good. The reactions of earnings have been pretty decent. Those are the reasons that I'm trying to uh, talk myself through in terms of if they what are the, what, what what are they ripping this price up to and why, you know. Do they have the conviction to make new highs going into earnings after the bell, along with um, the the Fed report tomorrow, the committee, which is going to define whether they cut rates or not, or when they're going to, or if they're going to pause, etc. Would you be more willing to take profit up here, you know, kind of unravel your position, or are you willing to press and aim and gun for more higher prices? And then what's your reward if that's if that's what you're shooting for? How much upside do you really have trying to bet for more for more upside going into those two events? Does that make sense? That's kind of the thought process that I'm kind of using to understand who why would anyone want to continue buying? Now I'm not saying it won't. We have fuel move for upside potential with all these squeeze participants that can fuel the market higher. But the philosophy can stand true going into the close, is what I'm saying. Just kind of my thought process there. We'll see. Bulls are stepping in the whole way up. They're absorbing every single sell order. And it's not to say that these are even sell orders, like sellers, active sellers. These can be bulls that are closing out their positions too, you know? We won't know for sure. The only reason I don't think they're active sell orders is because the I haven't seen the, the, the cumulative delta hasn't increased up here or decreased that much. Right, those active sell orders. This would be maybe half of what it was going up. It should have been like two thousand, give or take. There are active aggressive sell orders, so there's no sellers trying to initiate up here for the most part. So it's mostly just bull selling positions, maybe. They're coming. Thank you. Hasn't moved though. It's fucking weird. You know, like the NQ is still stuck in his still little slump. Damn cheese wedge. <laughs> Gotta love that cheese, man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they wedge this thing. If the NQ, if you're looking at the NQ, it's a huge cheese wedge. Between the 660s and the 620s. And it's just gotten tighter and tighter. and t Is there more news today? Like, am I missing something? <laughs> like, are they waiting for something to happen? <laughs> let's check. Let's check. Oh, man. This is crazy. <laughs> oh, boy.
this point, I gotta even put the low importance areas too, in case they have something. I don't know what they got. Oh shit! All right. What do we got, man? Is everything already out? Let's see. Twelve ten. Everything's out. It's F four crude. Right? What is this? Yeah, this is out. It's twelve already. Whatever. Yeah, I mean the candles I wouldn't really pay attention to. The lower highs, I mean I I get the lower candle prints, but honestly, it's probably a trap to think to 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 um think about those. The last few times it's been slow like one o'clock and then going to moon, so trying to stay unbiased, focus on levels, patience, all the things to talk about. Yeah, just be patient. So that price on there, there's you don't have to get in at this area right where I'm in. You can just wait for price to tell you what it's gonna do. It's gonna show its hand. And it's gonna show it quickly, and when it does, it'll be very apparent. You don't have to guess, right? You don't have to wait and hold a position here and guess. Simply wait for the market to break above 55, break below 25, and then you'll see your real move. After that, right? Wait for the expansion of price, volume to start kicking in, and then you'll get the real move right after. And it'll be cleaner and more concise, and you'll have a better understanding as to what price is actually going to do. It'll be very clean, but you just have to be patient enough to wait for it to show its hand. Unfortunately, I entered and I'm stuck here on this short on the ES. Um, the NQ trade, I don't really care. It just, you know, I'm up 40 points on it. doesn't really matter. The candle prints, the ones that are you're you're seeing on the smaller time frames here at the low end, at the high of that resistance zone, they're just too obvious for me to actually use them as a form of reference. Sometimes when the candle prints are too obvious, I mean most times it works, right? But I always think they're trying to trap you sometimes if you make them too obvious. So I'm not saying don't use them by any means. They're they're valuable, right? They have their weight, of course. You can just see that there's, you know, the participation appears minimal on the upside. But we wait and we see. We wait and we see. <laughs> oh God, thank you. You're lovely, aren't you, little bastard? Energy sector, okay, up a little bit more. Industrials are going green. They were down 0.1, now they're at 0.03. And Russell's still 0.73. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. Very interesting. Yeah, earnings reports today after the bell. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. Bum, bum, bum. Here's the NQ coming to 25s. Okay. Okay. What are you going to do, bro? What are they going to do? Are they going to trap some shorts there at the low? When they swing it low here into the 20s, trap them and then run it up? Or are they going to break it? If the e if the NQ goes to 25s and then gets absorbed, right? If the DOM here gets absorbed here as price goes lower, while the ES is at 52s, it's a good long uh, idea. But we'll see. The reason I say that is if they start to absorb price and then reverse it higher just to trap those shorts here at the low end, and we're at 52, which is kind of like this the previous breakout area. They'll reverse this back up, and then that'll be enough fuel to break us out. But we'll see. I don't see that set up yet. They're slowing down price here a little bit.
Yeah, they broke it. The momentum to the downside is picking up on the NQ. It's not really showing aggression. Just wait till make the tens. You have still a lot of area to buyers to step in. Just be mindful of that. We're at 52 here while the NQ. See if the if the NQ rotates above 35 after coming from here, you're gonna set up for a squeeze play. But I'm waiting. Again, I'm short, so I'm over here walking you through the bull side. A break over 25 and hold is pretty good. But right now they're not giving it to you. Yeah, a little lower. Let's see what happens at 580. 605 to 580 is interesting on the NQ. They get over 25 here, the bears are screwed on the NQ. 25 holds there. They're no good. No good. I'm waiting for him to fill me on this right here. They're right at the area. There we go. I'm watching the flow on the NQ, okay? Because that's the reason we're selling off. We're not selling off because the ES is selling off. We're selling off because of the NQ. So if you want to long the ES, which is bullish, you got to watch the flow on the NQ and then take the long on the stronger for the stronger version of the uptrend is the ES, right? So just watch the disparity there. Yeah, 600 coming. I agree. I think you, what you want to watch out for is either two things. You hit to the 580s, see if they absorb all that selling down there at 580s and trap sellers. You might want to try along there into the 610s and then take some off. And then if they hold above 25, then you have a possible squeeze back up to the 60s. If you get above the, six, the 625 and hold, they can squeeze it to first, 45, 50, and then from there, 60s, and then see what happens. Took partial profit, unfortunately, that I won't film. The next area I take profit is the valley area low, which is where it starts. And then after that, I want 38. 38-ish. Um, see if they give me that area. I'm not sure if they break this down. We still have a lot of work to do for the ES to break down. We've got to get below 46 first before any of that, right? ES is really strong today. Just be patient. Yeah. Overall, pretty weak flow on the NQ. Until we get above 25, then I'll change my mind. This area here. As long as we're below 25, I think you can rotate a little lower. Just a tad. Just a wee bit. There's your uh, short top tick trade in Tech Trader. Me trying to top tick the damn thing. I got stopped out for no reason. <sighs> um, let's see. I'm, I'm green on the ES now um, from taking profit on that first portion. I'm trying to catch the bottom here, so so yeah, I can't talk. <laughs> yeah, no problem, man. No worries. I'm not taking it. Nothing's personal here. Um, so yeah, let's see. I'll recap the the two day performance on my uh my trades tomorrow morning from Monday and Tuesday, just today. I'll show you guys my journal analytics thing. Six thirteen. It's a good long. Yeah, that's a good long. I like that because it coincides with 51 on the ES, 51, 52. It can reverse it here. Look how price slowed down here. This is not what you want to see if you're a bear. You don't want to see price hold like that. Oh, no. <laughs> that is concerning. When price is so when you're when you're when you got a trend going for you and you're going into a big area where there's where there is a breakdown potential, you never want to see price stall. You want to see active orders hitting the market, right? Because it's a big wall. Think of it as like a, a brick wall you're trying to chisel out. You're not going to do it 
by swinging at it every so often. You got to swing at it cons consistently over and over. Hit it, hit it, hit it, hit it until it cracks. Huge volume on the extension, no follow through. I'm in decent bounce area. Yeah, I think it's a decent bounce area based on the flow. You want to see sellers bait continuously machete or hit a hammer right here. Hammer this area because this is a wall where the buyers are trying to um, flip price back up to the upside. So this is not conducive for for follow through a price any lower when that happens. Okay. I wouldn't long it to say the least. I'd wait for 25 to clear. But if I long this, I'd be looking to long the low there and take some off at around 25 um, and then go from there to, to, re to overall reduce the risk of my exposure on the downside. That's what I would be doing if I was uh, getting long here. I'm currently holding the short. I'm up almost 20, 80 points on the short. I'm shooting for 100 points. I'm not sure if they'll give it to me though. 100 points on the NQ. I don't know if they'll give it to me. But the flow here says that they're, they're trying to flip the flip the they're trying to flip the book here right now the way they're holding this I'm giving this until 25 and then I'll close my short on the ES in general I would rather get in early one count gotcha makes sense I do the same thing. I test an area. I add small, right? I'll do like one micro, five micros. And then if I like the price action, I'm like, I'll let it dance around. If I like, I'll add more, more exposure. It's all contingent upon 25, in my opinion. See what happens. The ES wants to rip, though. If the ES gets below... If the ES starts to trade below 49, I think it's fucked. <laughs> uh, but we have we have a lot of work to do between now and then. Because they're, they're not allowing price to go below 51. Or 50 for that matter. But if they start to trade below 49, kind of into this value area, those bulls are going to lose some of their footing. And Q's giving it up again. Bottom, 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 so I usually get about 80 points sometimes on those contracts. 80, 50 on average, I guess. Sometimes, and my losses on average are about 10, 20 points on the NQ. But my most times I'm able to capture 50 or more points on the NQ. So I don't really mind taking my losses. I know the over time the edge pays out. You know, the edge it shows itself over time. So I don't really, like, you know, the thing is, like, I take losses on the stream, you guys. You guys are watching me take losses as price moves. I, I just laugh. It's cool, man. It's one of the best things to do if, you know, just take it easy. Don't take things too personal when trading. Try to have a good, a good demeanor or humor. It helps. Have a cleaner conscience. Waiting for price to get below 49. 40, 49, 48. That's the general zone. My take profit is 46, kind of where we bounced from earlier, right? I may move it to 47, depending on the flow. Here's the NQ. A lot of volume trading now here at the NQ. Check it out. We got 80s again. I want to see 80s trade. I don't know if they'll give me 80s, but I want to see what happens at the 80s. That's ideally where I think the bulls should step in about 85 or so. A lot of volume traded here, which is not, which is a good sign for the bull thesis. Okay. When you get a lot of volume in a small area like this on the NQ. What you want to see is volume come in and then get over the previous breakdown area, which in this case would be the 10s. 
right? So we broke down from. We broke down from the tens. If a lot of volume comes in here, we get over and hold above the tens, and you have a potential to trade from the tens and then stop below the nineties, and then try to take the first leg up to the twenty fives, de-risk the position there, and then hold for the next leg if they do give it or not. Uh, that's kind of like what I would be looking for, but I would wait for tens to hold. Here's 49. They're kind of teetering here. Boring day, man. Moves are so slow. It's okay, though. I end up the day, I'm going to probably end up the day green on the ES trades, even though I took a couple losses on it. Just because, again, risk management. It's okay. You know, I was down 200, I think, earlier, 220 on the ES. I'm, I'm green 52 bucks right now on the trade. Thank you. This one micro is printing, bro. So, uh, look at that. <laughs> this one micro is printing. I only took five micros today on the NQ, and it's about $331 right now. Almost 100 points on that one runner. Very nice. 100 points will be 80. I don't know if they gave me 80, though. I think 85 is where they wanted to bounce it. That's where I was waiting for, 85. I'm waiting to see what happens here, and I'll, I'll consider closing it. Here's the 47. Again, I said I'd move my order up on this one, as I think they might not. Uh, there you go. Got filled on 47 on the ES. The reason I'm filling the order is because we're at 85, a critical level on the NQ that I understand is potential to bounce us back up. And then the ES is trading near the zone where it bounced from earlier, 47, 48. They're both at bounce areas, okay? I'm going to close this long here. There you go. That, could, that concludes my short from up here at the high of day. Um, shorter five points off the high of day. And then concluded it here for 90 points. I didn't get the full 100, but it's fine. And then I'm holding this ES trade. I'm up 100 bucks on the day now on the ES con uh, count. And then 300 and some change on the NQ account. I'm going to hold this for 38. I think that's where I'll finally kind of flip it and close it out on the ES. Um, if we get, if we can hold below 46, I can potentially get 40, 38 maybe. And that'll conclude my short trade for the day. And I might call it a day after that. I don't want to take any more trades after this. Today's kind of tricky. I'll be watching order flow. I'm going to end the stream here. You guys, um, my runner will, we'll see what the runner does at this point. Um, I'm not going to allow this to, th even if I get stopped out on this trade, my trade, well, no, not yet. I can't say that yet. Here we go. Even if I get stopped out on this trade, I'll end the day green on this account. And the NQ undoubtedly is green for the day. I think we bounce here, though. It's possible to bounce. Yeah, thank you, guys. See you, guys. The other day. Bye, Matthew. See you intact. And Diego, if you're here, streaming shout. Thanks for tuning in today. I hope you learned something or got some value from today's stream. Um... Again, this just trade flips right on me. I'm still green on the day. Kind of just trying to protect profits at this point, given that I was red a little earlier on that account. Tomorrow, I'll recap my two tra uh, my I'll, I'll show you guys. See ya, Scott. I appreciate you being here, Scott. I love your energy, man. I always enjoy you being on, this, on the chat. See ya, Cracks. And uh, Diego, yeah. Oh, it's nice, Diego. I appreciate you, man. Thank you so much for being on the stream. Silvinas, thank you for being here, man. I know you had a video idea. If you want to kind of give me a more in-depth answer as to what you meant by mismanagement um, trade uh, or money management, please let me know. Maybe leave me a, cam a comment or whatever, and and I'll, I'll try to make a video on it, okay? Um, just if you want to be more concise. See you. See, see you. Enjoy time with your friends. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. Hope you all you guys have a good evening and uh, a good afternoon, and have a, have a safe trading day. Protect those profits. If you've made them, go into preservation mode. Later, ghost. Thank you guys for being here again. I appreciate you. Have a good one.